two then. Marin Catholic High School in Kentfield for the Division 4 AA CIF State Championship game. It's the Marin Catholic Wildcats hosting the Central Valley Christian Squad. They come in at 11 and 4. Marin Catholic is 13 and 1 on the season. Should be a great matchup. It's SoCal versus NorCal here today in Kentfield. Hello, everybody. I am Dave Cox, along with the Windsor head coach, Paul Cronin. You guys got close this year, one step away from this championship. You won a state championship, and you've competed against Marin Catholic many times in the playoffs. This isn't the team a lot of people thought would be here at this point in the season. How'd they do it? I think you, we all know their quarterback, uh, Mike Graziana, is just a great player. And he played in the, the section finals his sophomore year. He's a fabulous athlete. He's a dual threat guy. And if you have one guy coming back, you'd always take your quarterback. And I just think he's a team leader. You watch him run the ball here against Cardinal Newman and pound it in. He also has a really strong arm. He's someone that's really someone that composed in the pocket and will stay in there and take a hit make sure he gets the ball off but he's a special athlete he's one of those guys in high school that's very hard to defend defensively yeah he's a good one no question about it this was a huge play and there went over cardinal lumen a fourth down pass right on the money he is accurate he can run he can do a lot of things well on the other side great athlete in Jaden moore this guy is a legit college player and he's going to be tough to deal with today these are the type of guys that you hate to coach against because you really don't control whether you win or lose the battle. He's unstoppable if he's put in the right situation because of his speed. He's a Division One athlete. He's only a junior. It's going to be exciting to watch him play. Watch some film of him throughout the week. It's, he's an unbelievable athlete, so I can't wait to watch this game. Car uh, Marin Catholic will kick it off. Dave Cox along with Paul Cronin as we get set for this one to get underway. And away we go in the four double a championship game central catholic in the white great coverage by the kickoff team right there was charlie allen he had a big interception last week he tackles parker jones so central valley and their quarterback max baker will start deep in their own territory today these are always really important drives in the game you're nervous going into the state championship game and this first drive can get rid of those nerves. I always thought having the ball offensively is a little more scary than deferring and kicking it off. So it'll be interesting to see how Central Valley does in this first drive. Central Valley starts at the 20 yard line. Maybe just a little beyond that. That's about it. First and 10. Straight ahead it goes. And about three yards carrying the ball is Josh Souza. Wearing 48 today. He's 33 at home. A little something happened to his jersey, so he is 48 Sousa, on the road. Sousa is probably their best ball carrier. Really good runner, really physical. It's interesting there. Uh, Marine Catholic got into a, a one high safety look, which they generally don't do, so they must be a little worried about the run on the first down. There you see the quarterback. He's had a good year. His numbers are decent, 55%, 2,417 yards, 30 touchdowns on the year for Max Baker. Second down, here comes Souza again. Souza turns the corner, has a first down. As Souza takes off and gets good yardage. That was really a good defensive play by Marine Catholic. They bounced the counter play, but there was nobody to support the outside. So great run by Souza. Something that, you know, you watch him bounce the counter play, which is not traditionally where you want to go with that ball, but he outran that outside backer and got the first down. Huge first down. That's, that's something that gets rid of the nerves early in the state championship game. Yeah, always nice when you get the chains to move for the first time. And they did just that. So Central Valley Christian, they had a 21-9 
win last week. They were up in the high desert, over 4,000 feet up. It was cold, but they overcame it and won 21 to 9. So that was a big win for them to get here. They've been to the state championship one other time in 2018. Baker to throw for the first time today. And that one's incomplete. They had to go to Chico to play Pleasant Valley under coach Mason Hughes back in 2018. And what a place to have to go and play. They've just been recovering from the fires. The whole community rallied around that Chico team, and they lost to Pleasant Valley in that state championship. That's tough. You, know, you, you play a team that's emotionally charged because of what happened in their community. It's really hard. Momentum and emotion is a big thing in high school football especially. So tough to get a win there. I was in, it was interesting. They went back shoulder fade there. Um, on the on the first down play and it, they went away from Jaden so I'm interested when they're gonna try to get him the ball. Yeah Souza who's had a great season over 50 catches on the year. He's big, he's fast, he's got a lot of schools looking at him at the next level. We'll see if they can get him the ball here. Second and ten. They'll run it again with Souza straight ahead and look out he is dropped. Nice defensive play right in the middle by Hayden McBride. Great defender for this Marin Catholic team and he makes the play. McBride's one of those difference makers. He's great against the run, and he also can defend the pass. It was interesting. They lost someone. I don't know if Marine Catholic blitz there, but they lost someone initially at the point of attack. And that was tough for uh, Hughes to get any yards at all. Also in on that tackle was Will Clemens. He is the leading tackler for this Marin Catholic team. And I'll tell you what, he is a great player, and he's just a junior. Yeah, Marin Catholic has a scary team coming back. So there's a lot of, lot of great players coming back for him next year that will be really good. Early timeout. Wow, okay. Central Valley takes a timeout right here early on in the game. How about that? I like the trip set for Central Valley. They had one-on-one -on -one over there with their best guys. It would be interesting if they come back to that and isolate them on the corner. Um, third and 11 is not a down. You love being in on this. Big crowd here today. They were expecting this place to be filled to capacity, and that seems to be the clay case here. And what a great facility. Too bad they can't get lights, but still, it's a wonderful place to play football. They even added the stands down there in the end zone. How oh, you love coming to Marine Catholic. I, I think it's a really special place. And I know you'd love to have lights if you're Mozzie Moya, but it really is fun watching some day football. It used to be a lot more day games, and I like going to a 1 o'clock game, especially if you're watching a state championship game. I could not even park on the facility. I had to drive down to the hospital to find a parking spot. So it is a, a very, very excited community at Marine Catholic for this game. Marine Catholic knocked off Escalon last week, a 21-14 victory to get here. Central Valley, we mentioned that. They were on the road against Serrano. They won 21-9. And after the timeout, we are ready to go again. Third and about 11. Here comes Jaden Moore. They've got some blocking out there. He breaks a tackle, but he's going to come up short. Great job by the Marin Catholic defense. Looked like for a moment he might have an opportunity to get the first down as they set up this end around to their best player, Jaden Moore. Really good play call by Central Valley, Mason Hughes. And you thought he had enough space to get the first down, but number 31 came in and saved that first down run. Now you got to punt the ball, but that was great, great design on that play from Central Valley. That was Zach Taylor who made that play for Marin Catholic. Jake Truitt is the punter. Short one, far side. Does get a nice roll, however. And it rolls all the way down to the 34. Not pretty, but effective. That, the snap looked a little bit questionable on that, and the punt obviously hit the wrong spot in his foot there, but Central Valley did get lucky with that roll, so Marin Catholic is starting at the 34-yard line, but that was a, a little bit scary execution of that punt. Yeah, no question about that, but hey, all's well that ends well, and he got a decent roll out of that. Otherwise, Marin Catholic might have had the football around midfield. And I think the next time Marin, uh, they, Central Valley does punt the ball, I bet they come out they come after it pretty hard. Because I don't know how much wind affected that snap, but the snap seems a little bit uh, slow. It's Michael Ingracia, 34 touchdowns and only two interceptions, and those were last week. Uh -huh. He hadn't thrown one until last week. That is amazing at the high school level. Any level, for that matter. I mean, he, he's a special player, and that's uh, you, you like having him on your team in a big game like this. Nice first call. They throw a screen pass to get him comfortable. And whoa, that was How about a, that? What effort by number 25, really working hard. That was Bryce Cook, 
who made the initial hit, then Parker Jones mopped it up. So nice job by Central Valley to read that play. The pass was complete to Charlie Knapp. The thing that's amazing about Ingracia, he still doesn't have any offers at the next level. Come on, this guy's got to be a college football player. Sometimes uh, the size and the speed gets in the way of the intelligence, and, the, and you got a guy that he definitely can play, and I, I imagine mid-major picks him up and takes a shot to him because he's a winner. And it, it's kind of, you know, it's something that's overlooked with all these combines now and all this other stuff about 40 times. But pick a guy that wins, you know, and consistently, and he's obviously special enough to play at the next level. And he's one of those guys that was really hurt by COVID. Let's face it, there's a backlog of players at the college level because they got their eligibility back, and then you have all these guys who didn't get to play a fall season last year and it really hurt them talking to college coach of the day 7,000 people entered the portal so there's a lot of people to choose from so definitely favors the coaches and Gracia on third down this is where he's very effective but look at Central Valley and it's Jaden Moore who makes the play Moore what a, what a really good defensive series for Central Valley they, they made two plays, or one play against the screen right off the bat. They took away the out cut, and they come back and get pressure on him in the no, no, no back set. I was really impressed with what they did defensively right there. Yeah, That's Jaden Moore. Good three and out. Makes the play very nicely. Here's another angle of that. Where did Moore come from? There he is. He was pretty much unblocked. They were no back, and they released the tight end. They left him one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle, and that's what's scary about a guy like that. He can take over the game because of the athleticism. So now a punt. And Gracia is the kicker, and Moore lets it roll down to about the 35-yard line. So both teams have accomplished what they wanted to do defensively here early in this game, and that is get a stop. It's really important. I mean, this early in this game, I mean, this crazy thing with all the motion going on, anything goes bad, it can change the momentum for or against your team right there, and you can get yourself in a hole, which you do not want to do in this game. So I think both teams are satisfied with what they did in the first series offensively and then obviously defensively. They feel really comfortable. be interesting now as they start to settle down to see who takes control of this game in this next two series. So Max Break Baker brings his offense back out onto the field for the Central Valley squad. The Cavaliers out of Visalia. Traveled a long way to get here. I think they stayed in Walnut Creek last night. Practice down there in that area. And they get it out to the outside this time to Josh Noeski. He's a 5'11", 160-pound senior. And they do pick up a couple of yards. He had an RPO going on there, and Robert Tuttle did a really good job sniffing that thing out. That's a, They were in a counter, a counter play, and then they saw the, inside, the outside back and squeezed a little bit. They flipped out, and Robert got back and made a nice tackle. And that's a really good job against the RPO. Marin Catholic is loaded with guys like Tuttle, J.R. Bosch, Knapp, Charlie Knapp, just great role players that go both ways offensively and defensively for this team. Wide receivers, defensive backs, second and nine. They only got one out of that. They get it to Moore. And Moore steps out at about the 32-yard line. That's a gain of five yards. Interesting play and a nice little pickup. I think a really good play call. I mean, you just you want to get the ball to Jaden as much as you possibly can. The thing, the thought there is maybe put him to the field side where there's a little bit more space to run after the catch. But that's, you know, as a coach, you're really nervous when he gets the ball because he hit one tackle, he breaks one tackle, and he's gone to the house. Big third and four play right here. Yep, here it is. Third down. This game will be won or lost on third down today, more than likely. So far, both teams have come up with stops. Tell you what, Central Valley likes to melt clock. Swing this one out, and it's incomplete unless that's a lateral. They're going to call it incomplete. Tough call right there. I mean, it, it hits close. Splitting hairs, right? It looked like it's pretty uh, close to being a lateral right there. Um, good stop by, again by Marin Catholic. They had a swing pass to the tail back out of the backfield, which is a good call by Central Valley, but the ball was thrown a little bit low. See if we can pick it up here. Kind of hard to tell whether it was forward or backward. Definitely a little bit forward, enough at least, to warrant that to be called an incomplete pass. That's where having the replay at the next level is, is really helpful. End over end kick. And this time doesn't get quite as effective a roll. And Marin Catholic will have better field position. 
Kind of interesting. I think uh, Central Valley's uh, strategy is not to go fast, to go very slow when they have the football, keep Marin Catholic's offense off the field as much as possible. Not a bad idea for this high-powered Marin Catholic offense to keep them off the field if you're Central Valley. I think shrinking the game's a good idea by them. I mean, obviously, when you got in Graciato, that's such a, a dynamic quarterback. The less touches he has during the game is better. Here's the second drive after three and out. So it'll be interesting to see what McCaffrey comes back to do. They haven't ran the ball yet. Yeah, they did not have a lot of three and outs a couple weeks ago against Cardinal Newman. In fact, I think the Newman defense only stopped them once or twice in that ball game. First and ten from the 45-yard line. Ingracia to throw. More coming from the right side. And Ingracia does a nice job stepping up. This is what he does so well. Look out. He's at the 30. Down to the 25. Finally driven out of bounds by Souza. But a great run. That's a tough situation. They got into a quad set right there. Central Valley hopped into a man coverage. And when you have an athlete like that, um, <laughs> you just don't have, a, you can't account for that quarterback. That's what's so difficult about high, football in general, but high school football. Once you have a quarterback that's a run threat right there, it's really hard. It's almost like you're playing against 12 players in the field. He realized that Moore was coming from the outside and he stepped inside of him. Also in on that tackle was Smalley. Theodore Smalley and the handoff to Charles Williams and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage great job Jaden Moore right there again also in on that tackle was Zach Swart Jaden Moore did a really good job the back was set away from looked like my Catholics run inside zone and Jaden beat the tackle underneath that was a really instinctive play by Jaden Now you get down here. If you're in Catholic, you've got to get some points on the board. This would be a huge momentum shift for them. After that big run by Ingracia, here comes Charles Williams. Wow. Again, they're leading carrier, and the Central Valley Christian defense is right there to stuff it. First guy there was Caleb Callison. Levi DeYoung was also there. No gain. They blitzed both inside backers there. Great call by the defensive coordinator. And Caleb got through clean. I mean, it's tough to run against six, you know, six live guys. So third and 13 right here. You probably got two downs to get the first down. So it'll be interesting to call for Mozzie Moyette right here. Maybe throw a screen, get six yards, and then take a shot in fourth down. Third down and 12. He'll keep. Whoa. And he is dropped again right in the middle by Callison. Caleb Callison comes up with a couple of big plays. He's had a tremendous season, leads his team with over 100 tackles, two for a loss. He just had it one for a loss right there. Nice play. Again, yeah, same thing there. They kind of stemmed Jaden down into a three technique on the guard, and they blitzed Callison, and the Marine Catholic kind of lost the defender on that. It was an interesting call for for third and 12, they ran quarterback counter, but Central Valley did a great job with the defensive scheme. Okay, punting situation, but do you trust that right here with your quarterback as the punter? Yeah, I think you got it, fourth and 14. I think your Marine Catholic do try to pin him deep because if it was fourth and eight, yeah, maybe you got a fake opportunity. Fourth and 14, punt the ball and try to pin him deep. A little bit out of field goal range here early on. Ingracia is going to fake this. A penalty marker down. The pass is caught down near the 12-yard line. Another penalty marker down. I penalty marker is littering the field. I think what we're going to have there, Dave, is an illegal formation. I don't know if Marin Cap had enough people on the line of scrimmage. The second one is an ineligible man down the field. So, inter it would, I mean, Mozzie went after it. I mean, the little roll pass there. And actually, I think they... The guy that caught the ball was not the person that was throwing the ball to on the roll pass. You see him roll out here, and there's running a little out cut to get the first down. He overthrew the ball, and number 21 came back and made a really nice snag, J.R. Bosch. So, you know, I'd be, I was wrong last time. I'd be really surprised if they punted the ball. And in reality, because of the penalty, that play really doesn't hurt you because now you have a little more room to pin him down deep. So hopefully from Ring Catholic. Michael has a good punt right here and pins him inside the 20-yard line. Our referee, Ruben Candelaria, making the call. Ruben's been in this business a long time. He's a really good referee. Jaden Moore back deep. This time, Ingracia will kick it. Beautiful. And they're going to down it inside the five. Great job. Getting there first was J.R. Bosch. Beautiful execution. I mean, great punt by Mike. 
Jr. makes a great play, and the ball's at the five-yard line. This is the stuff that doesn't show up in the score, uh, the final score, but you see it throughout the game. The field positions really favored Marine Catholic. They had the ball at the 34-yard line, the second possession the ball at the 40-yard line. Central Valley's been stuck at the 20, now the 5, and then one time at the 25. So this is the stuff that can change the game right now. If you can get a 3 and out from Marine Catholic, you might have the ball at the 40-yard line have a really short field to have a chance to score. There's Max Baker back out into the huddle. Have to be smart with the play call and have to be smart as a quarterback down here when you're close to your own red zone. From the five. <laughs> Baker will roll. He's good with his feet as well. And he gets about three yards out to the 12-yard line. Not known for his running quite as much as Ingracia, but he's done a pretty good job with his feet this year as well. That was a really smart play by Baker. They had a little play action trying to get a post throw down deep, and he saw it was covered and got outside the pocket super quick and got two yards, but you take a sack in that situation and you're in trouble. Again, another important call. You're second and eight, and you have to get a first down here to reestablish the field position. Yeah, they've Anderson's already proven that their punting game is not their strength. It's even scary when you're inside the 10 punting the ball. No question about it. Temperature dropping just a little bit here. It's a pretty cool day, although it is sunny. Pass complete to the 12. No, it came out. In and out of the hands of Josh Noeski. Marin Catholic has moved their safety over to Jaden's side every time just a little bit. Um, here they went away from the safety and good throw. They really did a good job. Number 21 really did a good job. J.R. Bosch reacting to the stop throw and tackling it. And obviously, probably a ball that should have been caught, but when you get hit as you're catching, it's very difficult. There's another third. angle of that. All right, third and eight. Definitely a big play right here for the Cavaliers of Central Valley Christian. Move Jaden Moore inside this time to the slot spot. Baker's going to air it deep. Jaden Moore oh. can't quite get it. Oh, my goodness. Getting a fingertip on that was Charlie, Charlie Knapp. Knapp. What an outstanding play. They put Jaden in the slot position, and they gave him a shot down the football field, which is a really good call, I thought. And Charlie Knapp got over the top of the rub and just got a hand on else. That would have been... Probably a 40-yard play, if not more. Yeah, he might have gone on that one. Here's a really crucial punt right now. Where are you going to get the ball? And this is where you'd love maybe not to go after the block, but set up a return and catch the ball so you get no bounce after the punt lands. Charlie Williams back deep. Gets off a better kick this time, although it's still going to be tremendous field position for the Wildcats as it rolls out at the 36-yard line. Marin Catholic takes over in Central Valley Christian territory. Neither one of these teams has ever won a state championship, so they're looking for their first, although both have been to the state championship. Well, I think all the, all those nerves have gone away now. Now we're into a football game, and both teams are doing a really good job defensively. It's just going to be who can find something offensive that can have some consistency with. Because once you get something that's consistent, now you can start countering that and having some plays pop for you. So we'll see what Marine Catholic does early in the drive here. Their run has not been very successful. Their screen pass has been shut down, so we'll see if they get the ball down the field a little bit more. 4.48 to go here in this first quarter. Dave Cox and Paul Cronin bringing you the action from Gelati Field in Kittfield, California. Charles Williams straight ahead. This time he does pick up a couple yards. Another unbelievable play. They run inside zone again and at Jaden Moore, not away from him. Jaden Moore is able to take on the drive block and punch inside and make the tackle. He's a guy that's just, you're just trying to contain that guy because he's a difference maker in the game. Hand off straight ahead again. Charles Williams, sophomore running back. And he gets to the 29-yard line. I tell you what, it is not easy to run up the middle against this Central Valley Christian team. They've done a really good job against the run. And, uh, I mean, Charlie, Charlie Williams is a really dangerous back, too. He's one of those guys that gets in space. He can go all the way. And then you have Graciano back there as well. Williams is 6'2", 175-pound sophomore. Third and four. Probably have two downs here. Um, it would be interesting to play call here if you run it one more time. It's like... 
no, no, no. I'm saying more than I'm likely saying four down territory oh, there for the Wildcats. Wide open is Matthew Greco. Greco down to the 12-yard line. Great play call. And Greco has big yardage. The motion puts Central Valley in a t difficult spot. It looked like it was an RPO. So you see when the motion's across, Greco, they didn't add a number outside the box, Central Valley, and they just flip it out to him. And it's two on three. And they're in Catholic, and now they're inside, inside the 20 with a chance to score. First and 10, Wildcats. And not much there for Ingracia. He gets to about the nine yard line. Heading right into that was Arthur Schapp. He's a six foot junior, and Schapp makes the play. Good play by Schapp. Stretch option by Marine Catholic, and really, they really strung it out well with the quarterback had to cut back and right into Schapp's arms. Again, been tough tread and running the ball at him right now. Yeah, I'm very impressed with their defense right in the middle. Boy, I tell you what, they hit. Their physical group, yeah, the D line is very active too. It's a. Uh, fun defense to watch right now and they and in multiple sets they hop into a 30 and they, they'll stem out down to a 40 front so it's been fun to watch second and seven now from the 10 yard line Williams is the lone back Ingracia looking to the right he'll roll left he's in trouble Ingracia gets away but he slips Moore got just enough of him to knock him out at the 12 yard line Charlie Williams did a really good job picking up the edge blitz right there but the defensive end on the right side did an amazing job. The quarterback's eyes were on him, and he just paused, knowing that if he tried to attack the guy, he'd beat him outside quick, and it allowed the other defenders to chase him down. But I thought that was a really good design defensively by Central Valley, sending the edge blitz off the corner, and then Williams did a good job picking it up, but there was too many guys coming from Ring Catholic to block. Dangerous play here, third and 11. Probably got a field goal. It'll be interesting to call right here. And get a first down at the three-yard line. Ingracia in trouble. Wow. And he wow. is going to go down way back. Huge play. Blitzing in was Souza that time. And Souza makes the play. Wow, they went man zero there. And Marine Catholic tried to roll pass. And Souza just got to the quarterback way too quick. It'll be interesting to see the range from the kicker. You're looking at about a 43, 42-yard field goal. And it's a tough down to go for. It's fourth and forever. So, uh, interesting call here by Mozzie. What will you do here? Looks like they're going for it, though, right now. Now, Central Valley, you wonder if they send pressure here and try to get the ball out of his hands super quick because they really have to get it to throw down the field. Fourth and a bunch. Call it 22. Ingracia has time. Has no one to throw to, and he ends up just having to launch it out of the back of the end zone. Central Valley comes up with a big play. Here's that sack that really pushed Marin Catholic out of field goal range. Great call. They went man zero on the right time. They came off the edge untouched, and, and Michael was run, rolling into it. So great call by Central Valley's defensive coordinators. Then on the fourth down play, they showed man zero and bailed out into his zone, and Mike had nobody to throw the football to. So the Central Valley is doing a really good job defensively early in this game. They've put, been put in some very difficult spots by their offense and special teams, so it would be interesting to see if they get something going offensively. That pressure came right up the middle. Here's a big drive for Central Valley. Just a field position changing drive. They get a couple first downs. First and 10 for the Cavaliers now. A little bit of breathing room out to the 24. That sack was a big play. Baker's throw is low but caught at the 30. Grabbing that is Josh Noeski. Yeah, you take that in first down. They throw a little stop pattern to the field side right there, and it's a five-yard gain. Now it puts you in a really comfortable second and five. Good throw by Baker. Nice catch. And now you're moving on to hopefully for Central Valley get that first down. That It's been a while since they've had a first down. Yeah, they got a first down on their first series. I don't remember one after that. That's oh, it. Oh, wow. They hopped into a double wing set, Dave. Yep, here they go. We haven't seen that yet from wow. them. And it works. Souza gets the first down at the 35. Yeah, Mozzie told me about this yesterday. He said they do do this double tight formation. It's one of their goal line or short yardage plays, and it works pretty well right there. That might be a game changer right there if you can get some consistency out of the double wing. And it's something that really melts the clock, too. But I love their tempo coming out of the huddle. They got the ball to the right guy, and now it's, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if they stay in this thing. Because really, if you're going to run double wing, you got to do all three downs. They're coming, and they're going to do it again. 
pitch out. And they get to the 39-yard line. That works again. Dominic Maxfield carries that time. Dominic did a great job cutting it back. Looked like the power play was kind of jammed up in the front side. No space, and he cut it back and got a little room. And really, you'll take three and a half yards if you're running the double wing. So it looks like they're staying in the same set. It'd be interesting if they get Jaden involved with them touching the ball a little bit. Yeah, they're sticking with it. Maxfield in motion Downer. again. This time it goes up the middle. Nice call. Oh, Good yard. Out. Ball wow. loose. Caleb Callison carrying. What a great play by Drew Ramos to rip the ball out. But it looks like Central Valley got back on it. Wow. That was a big play. I mean, they, if you watch here, if you go back to the replay right now, they run counter for the first time. And they obviously have space back side. But Drew, Drew Ramos just grabs the ball, tackles the ball, and rips it out. It looks like number 60 was the person who recovered that. So you had Joe Padilla jump on the ball, and that's again, hustling down the field. That's why these guys are in the state championship, because they care a ton about their teammates. He hustled down the field, and he jumped on a ball. Loose ball plays are important. Now they jumped out of the double wing set, so interested to see what they go with here. Picked up a couple first downs. Now they're near midfield. Spread it out again. Oh, what a Intercepted. Play. Wow. Picked off by Zach Taylor. Taylor going down the sidelines. Taylor, gone. Touchdown, Marin Catholic. Zach Taylor makes a huge play, and Marin Catholic takes the lead. Those are plays you wish you had back sometimes. It looked like they had an RPO going on, a slant backside with some kind of power, power read going on. Quarterback misread it. Matt Taylor made a great play, tipped the ball, caught it, and took it down the sideline. Um, interesting, they jumped out of the double wing set as quickly as they did. They're having success with that set. Maybe taking a few more snaps, and that'd be good. Again, RPO, he got a slant cut backside. Zach Taylor just did a great job. He got his hand on the ball, and then number 22, working hard down the field, Daniel O'Leary made a great block and allowed Taylor to get in the end zone. That's a big first score in the state championship ballgame. Hawthorne to try to add the point. His kick is up. His kick is good. Marin Catholic takes the lead. Wow, what a play on the interception. If you are Central Valley's defensive coordinator, you're a little frustrated. I mean, they kept him out twice in the, inside the red zone, and the first score comes on your offense. That was That's a tough thing, but now we'll see kind of their true heart. How do you bounce back? You didn't score first. It's late in the first quarter right now. You got a lot of football left. Now you got to get the offense kind of going, reestablish field position, get some points of your own. Press about Marin County, they got a ton of guys that are kind of outside backer, hybrid safeties, you know, the Boshes, the Tuttles, those type of guys, the Taylors, and really dynamic defensively. I mean, they're, it seems like it's really difficult to move the ball. There is the pick again. Again, it was an RPO, and I just misread. It didn't seem like Taylor really jumped in far enough in the box to throw that ball, but he made a great play. I mean, the ball is, you know, well thrown. Taylor got one hand on it and just tipped it up himself and made, you know, the play of the game thus far. Dropping back deep now is Parker Jones. Received the kick. McKay Hawthorne will kick it away for Marin Catholic. The Wildcats in the lead. Short kick. He's got it. Marker Jones to the 31-yard line. That's where Central Valley will start on their next drive. Here's how that touchdown was finished off. Just a great cutback behind that block you talked about. And then he cuts inside for the touchdown. Yeah, that, that's just a hustle play. You get, And, again, that's why great teams are playing still this late in December. You have people running down the field after you get an interception. And, obviously, Taylor did a good job using his block getting in the end zone. Now, this will be an important drive here. How do you bounce back? And especially as a quarterback, Baker threw an interception. Obviously, he feels bad. But you got to have a short memory in this position because you need a drive here. You cannot fail here. First quarter coming to an end as they hand it off to the 34-yard line. That will more than likely be the final play of the first quarter. That was Dominic Maxfield carrying 
One thing you notice that Central Valley has done a good job of, they've been rotating their players, um, giving people a rest. And so the Souza was on the sideline early just to give them a few extra seconds coming into the quarter, and then you saw more also on the sideline. So they, they're trying to really be smart about how they're using their players and the number of reps because they know it's going to be a long game. This is a, a fun game to watch so far. I've really enjoyed that first quarter. It'll be interesting to see what is to come. So the end of one here at Marin Catholic High School, and it is 7-0 Marin Catholic. We'll take a break right here and be back with the start of the second quarter in just a moment. CIF Sports, true dedication. Performances are improved by hard work and good preparation and not by performance-enhancing drugs. CIF Sports, true sportsmanship. Pursuing victory with honor is fundamental, and I should display class and character whether my team wins or loses. CIF Sports. True leadership. Being a leader is more than helping my team. It also means being a luminary at my school and in my community. There are numerous ways. Getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Central Valley with the ball. In trouble, and the sack by McBride. Great play. McBride comes in and makes it. They put McBride in a different situation. They hopped into a 30 front, into the hash, and they blitzed him late, and the Central Valley lost him. But one thing you'll say, the coverage was really good because Baker did have some time before McBride got there. Be interesting now, you're in third and 14. You kind of have a get out of jail. Oh, they hop back in the double wing. This is interesting. Toss it, Souza, big yardage, Souza down, out to the 41-yard line. Boy, if I'm Central Valley, I just stay in that set right now. They've, they've really done a good job in that set. That's the most production they've had. It was third and 14 right there, and it looks like they you know, had a 13-yard carry, and the spot was definitely in question a little bit. It looked like they might have got the first down, but this might be their set. Yeah, their coaches were not happy. They're in the sharing the booth with us. You might have heard them. <laughs> yeah. They're like, wait a minute. That's not a good spot. Tough to see because it's a sideline play, but it definitely looked like it was favoring Rick Catholic there. Fourth and one. They're going to go for it or at least try to draw Marin Catholic offside in a timeout taken by Central Valley. Well, you're, I mean, if you really trust the double wing, uh, all the old double wing purists would say you got to go for it on fourth and one right here. And again, it's a, it's a risk because if they don't get the first down, Marine Catholic takes over the short field. 14 nothing is a little bit scary when you're in a state championship game or any game. So, But if you get the first down, you may be staying the double wing set and see what you can get out of it. It's been a good set for Central Valley. It's gave them the first down on the, the, the best drive of the game when they got past the 40-yard line. And then that obviously the third and 13 play was... It was uh, interesting to see him hop in that set. Really good gamble by the coach to figure that Marine Catholic would stay in their 30 front in their third down package and they can maybe catch him or something. And Souza has really impressed me defensively and offensively. Runs the ball super hard and he moves really well as a defender. Looks like they're going for it, Dave. Bringing the offense back out into the field. You go double wing here, coach? What do you think? You got to go double wing. I, I, right now, I'm thinking you might go double wing every snap how much success they've had with it. There it is. Oh, what He's rolling, call. and Baker's got what room out there. If he keeps, he does. First down. What a gutsy call. <laughs> Off their power play, they got a little boot pass set up on fourth and one. That was a, a really good call by the offense coordinator of Central Valley. That was, and I'm impressed by that. Now, what do you do? Do you stay in there? There's the boot play. You got both guard tackle pulling. Marine Catholic blitzed the set, and there wasn't enough guys left backside. So they must have really known kind of – that's some film study they must have looked at throughout the week, knowing that Marine Catholic in fourth and one really pressured in, inside the box. And they caught him They caught him off guard. Just shy of midfield. There's the counter, counter play again. Maxfield gets about three right up the middle. Second time we've seen that counter play. Looks like Marine Catholic did a little bit better job this time on it, but they still did have some space there. Maxfield, strong ball carrier. Uh, if you got a little bit more vertical on that counter, I think he gets a couple more yards, but Marine Catholic did a good job to tame that. Still got four yards. Same set. Here they come, right back to it. All right. Here comes Souza. 
penalty marker down, and Souza's close to a first down. Interesting, it was more like a sweep, like a fly sweep with Souza that time. Yeah, they flat motioned the thing and ran fly. The tough thing about that, they put uh, number nine, Zach Zort, in a tough spot. He had a reach block, and he, he held the Marine Catholic defender. And that's something when you run wide, uh, those get called because one the line judges the side judges that's all they're looking at is that outside hold so it was a tough spot to be in for Zach Ward. now you probably got to pop out of that double wing set you're at second and at about 14 so now you're probably going to see more open stuff shotgun from Baker second and 15 nope staying with it Another nice defensive play, Central Valley drive. Oh, there's an RPO right there. Matthew Greco makes a really good play, breaking two tackles and getting something out of it. Do you have someone else that can play? Looked like they're running inside zone and the outside backer squeezed in. They flipped out a bubble screen and Matt, Matt Greco took care of the rest of it. Pass down. is complete. Knee was down. Nope, his knee did touch yeah. down. Second and a couple there. It was too bad. Kyle McBride had a little bit of space. Again, another RPO. They were in a tackle trap play right there. And he liked what he saw outside the box, and Michael threw it out to McBride, and he actually had some space, but unfortunately for them, it was a low ball, and his, his knee had to catch, go down to catch the ball. Here's a big play, third and four. You get a three and out, and now you get a chance to score again if you're Central Valley. Marine Catholic, there's a field position play right here. Boy, the second quarter is rolling by. Only 4.45. Yes, That's going super quick. Motion to Novak. Third and four. Pit, ooh, man. Low pass Still incomplete. Strong. They're going to have to punt. That was a really good concept. They got in a four-by-one set, and they ran a bubble with two spots. And Central Valley defended the inside spot, but the second spot had some room there. We just didn't cross got to just not make a good throw there. Here's a big punt now. It was a really big punt. Central Valley, who drove down close but then missed a field goal, never really got it off the ground, which I guess answered your question, Paul, about range, not one of their strengths. Ingracia will punt. Jaden Moore back deep for Central Valley. Low kick. And they're going to let it roll, and it rolls down to about the 38-yard line. The wind seems to be affecting the game a little bit in the punting game. Seems like when they punt heading south, they're kind of, you can't get it up in the air. It really dies on them a little bit. But this is the best field position by far for Central Valley. You got 423 on the clock, so plenty of time. You can use the entire playbook right now. For them, you'd love to get a score late in the half and go in 7-7. Seven, seven. Looks like Baker's feeling completely fine. Dog in there with no pain, no limp at all. Going to spread it back out. 4.23 to go. Low scoring first half here in Kentfield in this 4 AA championship game. Here's Maxfield. He's been carrying a lot, and there's a penalty marker down. He I gets think to about may, the 44. That may be a face mask call. I don't know if Charlie and, uh, Allen got his hand in the face mask right there, but it looked like a spot where you see a face mask call. Nope, it's a hold. So it must have been the left tackle right there. So this one is going to come back. Let's see if we can see that play again. Where's Ruben Candelaria? Our referee making the call. Well, you're first and 20 now. Again, still have plenty of time in a situation where you need some yards in these next two plays to give yourself a chance to third down. It's always tough to get a, a holding call early in the drive. First and 19. Um, Baker fires it complete to about the 39-yard line. That is Josh Noeski who catches that one. It looked like he got a little banged up there. 
on yeah, that no, play. Noeski is getting up very slowly. He did a really good job settling in the zone, and then Baker put it on him. But it was a really big hit by the safety coming down. I don't know. I, I believe that was Zach Taylor coming down on the hit. And they're going to work on Noeski. We'll hope he is all right. Yeah, you hate to see any injury in football, especially in a game like this. Central Valley offensively does so much. They, they get into a double wing set. They're they're open. They have they have a wing set that's in gun as well. They have their own counter out of it. They have a lot of really nice plays, nice packages. Um, they've done some good things offensively. I think the field position in this game has really affected the game. Ring Catholic was down inside their 30. They were down inside their 40 one time when they got the ball. And when you play with that field position that much, you're bound to give up some points. Unfortunately for Central Valley, he's done an unbelievable job defensively. The points came on the offensive side of ball, the ball for them. All right, we're going to step aside while they attend to this injury. We'll be right back with more from Kent Field. CIF Sports. True dedication. Performances are improved by hard work and good preparation and not by performance enhancing drugs. CIF Sports. True sportsmanship. Pursuing victory with honor is fundamental and I should display class and character whether my team wins or loses. CIF Sports. True leadership. Being a leader is more than helping my team. It also means being a luminary at my school and in my community. There are numerous ways student athletes in California exhibit the importance of high school sports. The California Interscholastic Federation wants to salute all of its student athletes who strive to be successful on and off the court. The double wing. Here comes that double wing play. And Marin Catholic stuffs it. Not much there. It seems like there's something that Central Valley jumps in after timeouts, after they have a pause and play. And I, I think that's a sneak in the personnel on the field so Marin Catholic can adjust. Now here's third and seven. This will be interesting to see if they stay in that set or they go to a more traditional set. The last two times in third down, they felt comfortable being in this set. They're in it. They're in it. There's the counter play. He's got space. Not oh, enough space, nice however, play. as it's read very well that time by Robert Tuttle. The handoff was to Callison inside. Callison had some room over there. Tuttle just made a great open field tackle. I mean, it was really one-on-one -on -one at that point. And you know what? Tuttle really made a great play because Callison, if he beat that tackle, had another 20 yards to run. So DeYoung will punt now. They're putting Williams back, which is the first time Williams has been back there. Good punt. Spiral this time. And it's going to kick oh. way down inside the five. Can they what stop it? Play. Yes, at the one-yard line. Uh, down on coverage was Zach Zwart. And, boy, you can't execute that play any better than that. It just seems like when they're punting the ball, Heading to the north, they're having a lot more success. The wind might be a little a little worse than I anticipated right now because that ball traveled really well. Great punt, and then Zach Zort did a really good job down in the one-yard line. Now, if you're Central Valley, you've got a few timeouts. I think they use one of their timeouts, so they have a timeout or two remaining. So if you can get a stop here on first down, you got a chance to get short field position and maybe a chance to score late in the, court, late Central, in the half. Central Valley does have one timeout left. I think Marine Catholic right now, if you're them, you're trying to get out of this half. And it looks like they're going to their goal line package right now, which is a double tight set with two H-backs and the quarterback is probably going to run the ball here. And Marin Catholic's going to take a timeout. Man, this is a... If you're Central Valley, if you can make one play in the backfield right now, would be the time you want to do it. The tough thing about this is when you start selling out in the blitzes and these, uh, these these chances you take down here, there is a chance there could be a big run that pops. But, I mean, if you're central, I think you really got to almost hit the gaps right here and try to make a play in the backfield. You can get two points out of this. That would be huge. Or just a stop on first down and keeps the ring Catholic stressed out with their plan from the one-yard line. 
Coming up at the half, we've got a really nice video that talks a lot about the history behind this Dino Gelati field and the Marin Catholic program and how they got this stadium built, why they built it for Dino, Dino Gelati. It's just a great piece put together here by Marin Catholic. That will be coming up at the half. And then we'll have highlights of the first half of play for you as well. The Gelati family has done so much for the school, and it's it's uh, you see these buildings pop up, and there's a lot of these you just know they're a part of it. And they've, they've done a great job with the weight room in Catholic, and it's just a beautiful school to, go, to come visit. And Gracia, oh. he does get out of the hole and gets out to the four yard line. Successful first down play. I think you wait if you're Central Valley to use your timeout after the uh, when after the second down play you still if you get you get a stop here you're still gonna have about a minute 30 maybe a little bit less if you can get a stop and make them punt second down in Gracia again take your time out now but now you're I mean it's still third and two Marine Catholic's done a really good job getting out of this doesn't look like Central Valley is going to do that. Looks like they're going to wait till fourth down to use their, or wait till they, after third down to use their timeout, which might be a good idea. And Gracia slips, but he might still have the first down. It's going to be really close. It looks like, yeah, he's right on the line. I think you're right. But I mean, now if you're Central Valley, you, you take the time out. No, the chains are coming out. Yeah, they'll stop the clock for the no. They're moving the chains. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're giving him the first down. Well, the ball was at the one yard line, and it looks like it's a little bit past now the 11. That's a big first down from Rink Catholic. Huge. Now, do you take a chance, or do you just go into halftime, Dave? Well, that's a good question. They've got some firepower. We'll see. I think if you're Mozzie right now, you're pretty happy just to get out of dodge, but. We'll see. They might might run one play that would be an interesting one. Now Central Valley is going to take a timeout. I think that's a good timeout right there. I think they're going to back up their DBs and kind of get a little bit safer right there. I mean, Catholic was in the trip set, and um, they had a one-on-one -on -one matchup. The DB was pretty tight for this, this late in the half, so I'm sure that they saw that, took the timeout, and said, hey, guys, there's 53 seconds left in the half. They got 89 yards to go. Let's be smart. Really good first half. I mean, super defensive, very competitive, impressed with both teams. Um, fun high school football game to watch. How big is that pick six right now, Dave? Oh, my goodness. That's the only score of the game. The lone touchdown, the pick six. It's crazy. You go into every game and you think you know how it's going to play out You're a little <laughs> as a coach and as a fan. And right now I'm sitting here looking at it. I thought Marine Catholic would have some success offensively, but Central Valley's done an unbelievable job defensively against them. Yeah, let's face it, you don't get this far unless you're a capable team. 100% true. They're throwing the ball. Screen. Good call. See it. Oh, look at Jaden Moore. Ooh. Steps up right in his Ooh. face and almost could have picked that off. <laughs> yeah, maybe that might Mozzie might go to the run game now after that. That was a scary thing if you're a Marin Catholic fan. You got probably the best athlete on the field coming clean to your quarterback and he tries to get over him and Jaden Moore jumps up there and tips the ball and a chance to catch the ball after the tip. Wow. Yeah, you're right. This That could have been it. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's checking their wrists. They're calling a play. Two to the far side, two to the near side for the Wildcats. There's a run play right there. Williams yeah. with a nice Ooh. big hole. Look out. He's all the way out to the 27-yard line. Charles Williams with a nice run. Now, Marie Catholic's got two timeouts, and again, play before you think about running run the clock out right now here at the 26 27 yard line now do you think about trying to get yourself in field goal position 
But Williams is a dynamic back. He's one of those, I can't believe he's one of the sophomores. He's someone yeah. you hand the ball to and he kind of floats. It's just one of those guys that you cringe to think about him as a junior and senior. He looks like a track star. Yeah, he hit that hole very quickly. 45.6 to go. And stay with us at the half. Great video recently produced by Marin Catholic about the history behind Dino Gelati Field and Stadium. It's a great piece. And they're right here, 45.6. Now you would love to get your, you know, make something simple. Throw something simple, maybe even to Williams and get him in a little bit of space where he's got a chance to make a play for, you know, a play that kind of pops a little bit for you, get you a realistic chance for, you know, a field goal or a touchdown. But right now at the 27, more bad things can happen than good at this point. So you're still a little leery on how long you want your quarterback holding the ball. And Garcia fires it complete to the 45-yard line. Nice catch in traffic by Cooper Haswell. And what a throw, right on the money. Double slant concept. Haswell got inside the defender, and Michael just put it right on him. So that was really, that's, again, you trust your senior quarterback, right? You got double slants right there. Um, he looks like he beat Souza. Oh! That pass is batted. Nice job defensively by Arthur Schaap to get there. Let's go back to that completed pass again. Penalty marker down on this one. It's a good call. I think it's one of those plays that if you hit it in time, which he did right there, you got a chance to pop it and run after the catch. Again, they beat Sousa inside, and, and Graciano just put it right on him. Got the first down, so the clock stopped, and they ran up and got another play. Looks like Marine Catholic still has one timeout, so they got 45 yards on one timeout, 29 seconds. Holding on the defense, so this oh, is going to wow. help the Wildcats. You don't see that called that often in high school football. You see that a lot in the colleges and pros, but yeah, that's a that does help Marine Catholic at four, their own 45 now. Yeah, this drive started at the inch line. It's amazing. When it started, you thought Central Valley had the advantage, and right now Marine Catholic's in a spot where they can get some more points on the board and make it difficult. This drive started inside their own one yard line. Triple teaming more, and it works. First down at the 30 yard line. Nice catch in traffic that time by Charlie Knapp. Another slant cut. They ran off the two and the three receivers, and Charlie Knapp came underneath on a slant. And right here, Ring Catholic, you can tell, well oiled in the two minute drill. They get up the ball, they take the first down, change move, and they get spiked the ball as fast as they can. And really, right there, and here's the throw right here by Michael again. Another slant cut. Slant cuts are great down in this time of the game because if you could hit them on time and create a little bit of space, you have a chance to run after the catch. The only downside to that is they're not moving to the sideline. And because of that, you're going to have to down the ball or take timeouts to stop the clock. But right here, you get the 31 yard line, a chance to score. I've seen Ingracia do some amazing things in situations just like this. They would have got 18. Throwing it to the fade, wow. and it's caught! Touchdown! What a catch over the shoulder by J.R. Bosch. Touchdown, Wildcats. Yeah, all you can say is wow. I mean, that started at the one, what, half yard line, and they drove 99 yards. And again, going back to the top of the show, why is Marin Catholic in this game their quarterback? Why did they choose to take some shots in them down in their own territory? Their quarterback. And here's Graciano. Basically a fake cut. He liked the matchup. He looks off a little bit. And J.R. Bosch beat the guy by one step. And what an over-the-shoulder catch by J.R. Bosch. The ball was perfectly spotted. He had one yard of room. And that really changes the complexion of this game heading into the second half. Extra point good. It's 14-0. Marin Catholic. What a play. What a drive. How big was that, Dave? That was huge. We got another angle for you. Again, they went trips. They had solo away from the trip side. And 
But again, he trusted J.R. Bosch, and he, he won on the release right there, and it was a great ball. And it's really tough. I mean, I, I, you see guys catch balls in front of their eyes a lot of times better than over the shoulder. The ball is kind of drifting away from him, and J.R. Bosch is able to reach up and make the catch over his left shoulder, and it's a game changer. That's one they might look back when they win the state title and say, that was the play. There's Ingracia, perfect throw, fade, outside shoulder. Only guy that could make the play was his guy, and he did. 13.9 on the clock now. Hawthorne's kick angles out of bounds. You almost make him re-kick it here. Yeah, almost. Yeah. And you move your guys up. Yeah, because you're really kind of hoping for some kind of a big play right here. You need something kind of sparky here. Maybe the turn will be at the end of the half to get you spark. I think you got to move your return guys up here almost to the 23 yard line, just kind of push them up. Because really, you're taking a shot at the big return. If you don't get it, you're kneeing on the ball, anyways. Hawthorne with a very short kick this time. And they'll have it at about the 46-yard line as Andrew Moorhead took that one. And they'll have maybe a chance for one or two plays here. Yeah, smart play by Marine Catholic. I think it really, uh, when you're, you're out of timeouts like Central Valley is, you know there's probably one play basically left in the half. So now get your DBs in the end zone, get a pass rush with a blitzer, and just hopefully the clock runs out if you're Marine Catholic. But they do have a shot at the 45-yard line. Looks like they're down on the ball, though. Willing to just get out of dodge at this point as the first half comes to an end. Very interesting first half of play. Marin Catholic leads it 14-0 as these teams head into the locker room. Very entertaining first half. Low scoring, which is kind of surprising from my standpoint, but... Uh, it's a competitive football game. Two good teams going head to head. Really good teams, and you know you you, you notice while watching the game is Central Valley really values defense. They they rest Jaden Moore and Souza in offense so they can play all the snaps defensively. So they're resting their hat on their defense, making some plays so they can win this game. So that's going to do it for the first half of play. 14-0 is the score, as promised. We're going to show that video for you all about Gelati Stadium and the Marin Catholic program. And we'll be back with some highlights of the first half of play coming up next. This stadium and grove in memory of Dino Gelati represent the core characteristics of what it means to be a Wildcat. Dino was a leader on and off the field. He had a passion for academics, athletics, arts, and a dedication to helping others. His unique ability to light up a room and his generous and caring spirit touched so many lives. Born and raised in San Rafael, Dino attended San Domenico School where he developed his passion for art. He then attended Marin Catholic High School, where he excelled in academics, athletics, and art. He then headed to the University of Miami to 
pursue a degree in business management and graphic design. A day after graduating from the University of Miami, Dino was tragically killed in a car accident. Our entire community was shocked to our core. The DG Foundation was established to carry on Dino's generous spirit and passion for academics, athletics, and the arts, and provide scholarship assistance to students at San Domenico, Marin Catholic, and the University of Miami. The foundation is also committed to improving art and athletic facilities throughout the Bay Area. Dino stands for what it means to be a son, a brother, an artist, a unifier, a scholar, and a teammate. His spirit lives on through the Dino Gelati Moda Stadium and the St. Dominic Grove and serves as a constant reminder to be kind, compassionate, generous, inclusive of others, respectful, and hardworking, just like Dino.
We're back. It's 14-0 here at the half. We'll take another quick break right here on the Community First Credit Union Halftime Show. You matter. And it matters what you do. Your actions affect those around you and your community. It matters who you buy from, where you bank, your footprint on the environment. Since 1959, there has been a local financial cooperative that is distinctively different from a bank. Its charter requires it to do good. Good for its members, their kids, and the communities where they live. That cooperative is Community First Credit Union. Anyone in the counties of Sonoma, Napa, Mendocino, Marin, or Lake can join. By banking with a credit union instead of a bank, not only do you get better rates, lower and fewer fees, but your locally earned dollars stay local. With Community First, you help people, businesses, and the schools where you live. Community First is also a leader in tech conveniences. The first with contactless debit cards, perfect in this pandemic era. We were the first locally based bank or credit union with an app to make deposits via your smartphone. And the first with 24-7 virtual banker powered by artificial intelligence. I want a bank where I get more. I want a bank where my community gets more. I want a bank where 80% of management are women. I want a bank where I can get the most free ATMs nationally. We want a bank that teaches us money. About money. Bank, where it matters to you, personally, ethically, locally. Community first started by local teachers in 1959, is here for good. We're back 14-0 here at the half. Good first half of play, very hard fought battle. And right now it is Marin Catholic leading this thing 14-0 at the intermission and boy I tell you what these teams have both played some great defense so far Dave Cox along with Paul Cronin and uh, you know it's going to be an interesting game I think both teams now have had a chance to make some adjustments obviously they have great coaches and we'll see who can come out with the upper hand in the second half first couple drives are going to be really important yeah I mean you, you're really Catholic you feel really comfortable going into halftime you're up 14 nothing and it's been such a defensive game it's going to be hard to get 14 points for Central Valley these first two drives, you know, offensively and defense, are going to mean so much for the game. You saw the field position really, you know, favor Marin Catholic the entire first quarter, which affected Central Valley's offense. Now Central Valley's got to establish some field position themselves. Let's take a look at the highlights of the first half of play. Show you what we're talking about. Good first drive, at least first first down play for Central Valley. They got off to a pretty good start. Yeah, Susan made a great run. He broke a tackle to the outside and got the first down. And then there's a great scramble by the quarterback from Marin Catholic. He got outside the pocket, and he, he's scary when he's outside the pocket, but that's something Central Valley did a really good job of containing him. And you, you, you see Jaden Moore making a stack on right there. This could have been a big play, but a great defensive play by Charlie Knapp. Game of inches right there. He catches that ball. It might be Central Valley 7-0 at that point. Charlie Knapp made a really good play. Looked like Marin Catholic was going to add to their lead, but then a huge defensive play by Souza. They did a really good job mixing up their defense. Every time they got into man zero, and it was a great sack for them. And this is the play of the game. It's an RPO. And it was, you know, not only a great play by Taylor, but look at the blocking downfield by number 22, O'Leary. Just an effort play that allows them to get in the, inside the end zone. The first score is a defensive touchdown. Great job, Rick Cavett. Good first half for Dominic Maxfield. He kind of established himself as the go-to running back for these uh, Central Valley Christian Cavaliers. Yeah, that was something I was impressed with. I really was impressed with how they, they really substituted their stars. And I think that's something that might pay off in the second half because now Souza and, and Jade Moore can do a, a play more snaps right now and he gives you an advantage if they're fresh. All right, we'll take another break right here and be back with the start of the third quarter in just a moment. CIF Sports. True dedication 
Performances are improved by hard work and good preparation and not by performance enhancing drugs. CIF Sports, true sportsmanship. Pursuing victory with honor is fundamental and I should display class and character whether my team wins or loses. CIF Sports, true leadership. Being a leader is more than helping my team. It also means being a luminary at my school and in my community. There are numerous ways student athletes in California exhibit the importance of high school sports. The California Interscholastic Federation wants to salute all of its student athletes who strive to be successful on and off the court. The CIF, dedicated to developing student athletes of character. This message was made possible by the CIF and Max Preps. CIF Sports, true dedication. Performances are improved by hard work and good preparation and not by performance enhancing drugs. CIF Sports, true sportsmanship. Pursuing victory with honor is fundamental and I should display class and character whether my team wins or loses. CIF Sports, true leadership. Being a leader is more than helping my team. It also means being a luminary at my school and in my community. There are numerous ways student athletes in California exhibit the importance of high school sports. The California Interscholastic Federation wants to salute all of its student athletes who strive to be successful on and off the court. The CIF, dedicated to developing student athletes of character. This message was made possible by the CIF and Max Preps. I'm here to announce my retirement from sports, baseball, basketball, all of them. I feel like it's time. The pressure that it takes to play at my age is just too much. So I'm done with the endless advice from parents to keep my head up, to keep my head down, to keep my head in the game. I know you think you helped. I'm walking away from the coaches that left me on the bench every time the game was on the line. I'm sure they'll agree I'm leaving at the peak of my career. I'll miss my friends and the fun we had when we were young. I said I'd play this game as long as I was having fun. And now, it's time to call it quits. Any questions? Who do you think can fix these issues? Um, parents, leagues, coaches, everyone. What are you going to do with all your free time? Whatever's fun. Thank you. Okay, here are three important reasons why your son or daughter should play a sport in high school. Number one. High school sports teach valuable life lessons like self-discipline and time management skills. Two. Teens who play a high school sport have better grade point averages. And number three. High school sports are safer than ever before. This message presented by the North Dakota High School Activities Association and the North Dakota Interscholastic Athletic Administrators. All right, we're back and getting ready to start the second half of play here at Marin Catholic High School for Double A. This is a huge kickoff and a special teams play right now. You'd love to pin him down deep. You got Williams back there as an explosive player, but you got to keep it deep here and, and trust your special teams to make a tackle. Marin Catholic will get the football. Down 14 nothing here, Dave. How big is this first drive for the Marin Catholic? Huge for both teams, really. Yeah. 
judging from the first half, this is definitely the way you want to kick the football. The ball seems to travel a lot better from uh, south to north as opposed to north to south. Um. Yeah, it looks like the officials are set and ready. And the second half is underway. Short kick taken wow. by Zach Taylor, the guy that scored the touchdown. Flips it. And a penalty marker comes down at the 26-yard line. Interesting. I thought they would kick it deep, and they chose to kick it to nut that guy, and then they flip it back to Williams. That was an uh, interesting play. You don't see that. Holding, so that's going to back Marin Catholic up. Not great field position. Start this second half. This is what Central Valley needed right here. Get the ball kicked deep, or not kicked deep, and then kick it deep. But get something like this, a penalty that forces Marin Catholic to be a little bit nervous. You're at your 17-yard line. You're up 14 nothing. You really, if you're Marin Catholic, can't afford to get too conservative here because Central, Central Valley has some players that are so dangerous. So it'll be interesting how they approach this first drive in the second half. Wildcats will take the field. And Gracia with a decent first half. Had some nice runs. Had that touchdown pass. Beautifully thrown to J.R. Bosch. Play of the game so far. 17-yard line. Williams to the 21-yard line. They've done a great job keeping him. Other than that one nice run he had, they've really done a good job against the run today. And they are they are tough in the middle. This team can really play defense right in the middle. Their entire defense is very impressive. I mean, they, they mix up the coverages. They have some special players inside the front with Souza and Moore. And the other guys play so hard. It's really fun to watch the defense. Second and six. Williams actually got about four yards on that. Pass complete. Out to the 50, 32 yard line, I should say. A nice catch by Cooper Haswell. Rick Havoc just keeps coming at you with different guys. They've got a lot of special players. Really good job right there. They motioned again. Remember, caught, they, Greco caught a ball early on a motion play. This time they adjusted out with Souza and they threw a spot pattern behind them. Really good job by Rick Havoc right there. They've had to play this entire season without their Division I tight end who was injured early in the year. That was an interesting play. It looked like a tackle trap, and it looked like the running back lined up on the wrong side. Um, tough first down play right there. Second and a bunch now as they lose yardage. Empty the backfield right now. This is where Graciano really runs the ball well. Fires it. Nice run after catch by Matthew Greco. Greco has made a couple good plays catching the ball and running after the catch right there. That time, Marine Catholic emptied the backfield, and Central Valley blitzed, went to the zero look, and they threw underneath it, and too much space for Greco, and he made a play out of it. Such a nice turn and run by Greco. First down, Marin Catholic. Whoa. Williams has a first down, his best run of the game. There's a late flag going on, too. I don't know if that was a late hit or what they called right there. It looks like a face mask call with the officials, it seems like. So they might add on to this. Really impressive first drive by Marin Catholic. Looks like they, they've chosen to run the ball a little bit more to the outside because of the inside boots and backers. They will add on. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay and see what might have happened at the end of that play. They run a base stretch play right here, and they bounce outside. Good play by Williams, and right on the sideline, they must have grabbed it. You see it late. I think yeah. the right hand might have been up in there. Hard to tell, though. Really hard to tell. It's a five-yard variety, so it must have not been too bad. Another first down for Marin Catholic. And Gracia has a man deep. Coming back to the ball. Does he have it? Yes, he does. Kyle McBride finally makes a catch, his first of the day. How about that? Marine Catholic's found some rhythm. This time they got in the max protection. They left the wing in, a back in, and they're going deep. And Kyle McBride, you throw it up, 50-50 ball, and great players come down with it. But really good ball by Graciano and Kyle McBride. Obviously, he's been a player all year for him, went up and got a ball. 
leading receiver on this team. This is exactly what Marin Catholic needed coming out. They did not have to go conservative at all. They went right after it. It's a really good job by them. Here's Central. the run earlier that sets up the play by Williams. So a very nice drive. It has been. Started at the 17 yard line. Now they're down to the two. And now here's the catch. Yeah, he, he's got good position, had a step on him, and again, it came down to him going up and getting the football. Kyle McBride, a big guy at 6'3", was able to out-jump the defender. Another angle of that. I think this is something people do not enough in high school football. You got a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. You throw him up there to your best guy, go get the football. And then that's what he did, and the ball was perfectly spotted. Michael threw a really nice ball. Missed in the spot where only his guy had a chance to the outside. Why not? So generous. And look at I mean, just tough on a defensive back when you're chasing the guy right there and you can't look back and the receiver can see the ball and then he's a 6'3 receiver with that. And Kyle went up and got it. Injured player will step aside and be back with more in just a moment. 1914, the California Interscholastic Federation has led the development of education-based interscholastic sports that help student-athletes succeed in their lives and pursue victory with honor. Representing more than 1,500 public and private schools statewide, the CIF sets direction for the future by building awareness and support, improving the participation experience, and establishing consistent standards and rules for competition and 735,000 student-athletes in California. The California Interscholastic Federation, committed to developing student-athletes of character. Obviously, dangerous situation. See if we can see what might have happened. Uh, Theodore Smalley kind of came down hard and landed on his back. Yeah, it looked like the head hit the ground pretty hard, too, at the end, kind of a whiplash type thing. That's the one thing about the artificial surface, it's less giving than grass. And you have a play like that where the guy comes down on his head, it's, it's a definitely dangerous situation. Heck of a catch. Yeah, really good play all around. I mean, the throw is amazing. It's a great scheme right there. Marine Catholic left, left an extra guy in, max protect, so they can get time for Ingrassiano to get the ball down the field. And then the catch was amazing. All right, we'll take another break right here. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. So it looks like they're going to have to bring him off the field, Theodore Smalley. Unfortunate situation. You hate to see that, especially late in the season. Never a good thing. Good thing it looks like he's walking in his own power. So it's definitely a scary situation when the head hits the ground like that. But it looks like he is stabilized. First and goal, Marin Catholic as we get play going again. Ruben Candelario says start the clock. If you ever needed a defensive stand, Central Valley, this is the time. And Gracia keeps, and he's not going to get there. Nice defense right in the middle. Once again, the strength of this Central Valley defense lies in the heart of that defense, and they get a stop. 
100%. You almost wonder if Marine Catholic tries to get a boot play, something to the outside, or even a wide run play, because Central Valley is very stout in the middle of the defense. DeYoung was the first guy on the scene that time, under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Garcia starts in the middle, then he bounces. And he's not quite going to get there. Play again was designed to go in the middle, and he just saw some space to the outside. He, he broke contain and almost had a chance to get in. And there's Souza right there scrambling, makes a good play right there. Almost. Again, number 14 came in. Cooper Nolan did a really good job making sure the ball couldn't be reached across the goal line. Another opportunity, and it looks like he's in this time. Ingracia straight ahead. Good blocking up front. It's a lot of bodies, and he kind of just kind of slid around to the outside. That's what got him in. Yeah, he slipped by. They had a defender that was unblocked that he kind of slid by inside, but I think there might have been. Was there a flag on the play, Dave? No, there is a flag down. Yeah, hold on. So it could be a holding, which would be a huge penalty. Ruben Candelaria will straighten this out. Points are on the board. See if they have to take them off. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Uh, Offsetting. Off yeah. Something must have happened after the play. A little bit of emotion from both sides. And here's the run right here. They did slip someone in. They, they lost the defender. And I can't see the number right there. Looks like number four slipped by. Um, but Graciano just was able to power his way into the end zone. Greco to hold. Hawthorne to kick. And he didn't get this one. Well. So the score is 20 to 0. Central Catholic will try and get their offense going now. Central Valley now, the double win kind of out of the game. Now you got to get the ball to people in space and see if you can get some big plays. Uh, down 20 to nothing is not the end of the world in the high school game, especially this early in the, side of the third quarter, but it's, you got to start scoring on your drives now. You, you're almost in four down territory any time you pass your own 40 yard line, so you got to take some chances. Good start with a big return. They could use field position. Zach Zwart and Parker Jones back deep for the Cavaliers. Be interested to see if Lynn Catholic kicks it deep or they continue to squib and pop the kick up. Hawthorne. Low kick, but it is going deep. Parker Jones takes it. Out past the 25, and he gets to the 30. Marine Catholic special teams are so solid. That was a really good play by number 31, Zach Taylor. He was a bomber, and he came off the edge and really flattened it down, got a hand on the returner. He allowed number seven to finish it up with uh, Gur Arthur with the tackle, but he made the play of Zach Taylor. Well, here you go. Big drive. We're in Catholic defense. The game is in their hands at this point. We're in Catholic looking for their first state championship. Three receivers to the far side for Baker. Flips it out. Souza. Nothing there. The defense makes the play once again for Marin Catholic Clements, the first man on the scene. Uh, the stock blocks, they missed both stock blocks up top, so they just throw a little stretch pass play basically. And both of their number two and three defenders missed the play. And you saw number four come through, Charlie and um, Allen, and make a really good play. Not the way you want to start the drive. We'll see if they go to get Jaden Moore here and take a shot. They have thrown it deep to Moore a couple times, but Ren Catholic has done a pretty nice job against their top player. Here's Maxfield, and he's nailed. Nice defense again. Daniel O'Leary makes the play. 
They're in a counter play, and really that's corner, the quarterback's responsibility. If you're in a counter, you've got to read the defensive end. And O'Leary came flat down the line, and nobody had blocked him at all, and he's able to catch the play from behind. Third down, and you need something positive here. I like it a little better when they put Jaden more to the outside because he does have some one-on-one -on -one coverage. When they put him in the slot set, he's doubled by the safety a lot of times. Going deep. Moore is out there, but the play is intercepted by Knapp. What a play by Charlie Knapp as he picks it off. Oh, my goodness. Well, Knapp had great position. If you see this play again. He got, uh, he gave Moore a lot of space underneath, and obviously in third and 13 you would. Really, if you had that ball back, you'd Baker put it a little bit short, you might have a chance to jump ball it with, with Jaden. But, you know, obviously good play by Mary Catholic, and that you're in that spot because the first two plays, you lost yards in the first play and second play, and now you got to take a shot down the field with your best player. And unfortunately for Central Valley, they were, uh, the guys did a good job deep. See what Marine Catholic does. There's the ball out there. And again, sometimes you throw these fade balls short. You put the guy in a spot which is jump ball where Jaden Jaden Moore could do a good job with jump ball, but you miss long like that, it's tough for the receiver. First time Marine Catholic's been in a two back set. Not much there. And Gracia stopped near the line of scrimmage and dropped. There's Charlie Knapp. Earned a little break right there. What a game he's done covering Jaden Moore today. They've done a really good job just as a defense in the hole. They'll, they'll move Jaden Moore around, but anytime he goes inside, they'll double him. They'll put number they'll put number five, Drew Ramos, over the top. And anytime he goes outside, they soften the corners up and they cheat the safety that way. So it's just a good defensive scheme. Here comes a zero blitz again. Man coverage. Three receivers to the near side for Ingracia. Got him. He's in trouble. And he's sacked. That time Central Valley did a better job. Oh, you hate to see that. Late marker. We know it's coming here. Yeah, you hate to see that. I think maybe you just let that go with a warning right there. It's one of those things. You know, they, they went zero. They pressed the receivers. They got to him. The quarterback still, you know, trying to pull away, and the defender just unfortunately played through the whistle a little bit right there. But you see him; he's still trying to run right now. And now Jade Moore grabs him right here. Is there a whistle? Who knows? And he lands on the quarterback. But one of those calls, maybe in this type of game, you just give the guy a warning, play the whistle, and then move on. But, you know, that's a tough job in the game, right, being an official. It's really it's bang, bang play. You're just calling it as best you can. Definitely going to march this against Central Valley. Boy, it went from, you know, third and probably 25 now to a, a second down and two. About one, actually, yeah, it's short yeah. yardage. Changes the game a little bit. And again, you know, that's that's part of it, right? You, to win these games, you got to overcome some calls that maybe work against you. And Rick Catholic, I think this is a good set for him right here, this two-back set. They, it allows him to have the one-on-one -on -one matchups um, on the outside, and they can still run the ball with a two-back look. In the no-back, really, Central Valley's doing a pretty good job of just really saying, you know what, we'll, Go ahead and throw it quickly because we're going to just get plus one every time and get after quarterback. So I like this set from Marine Catholic. Ingracia, no, yeah, Ingracia's got it. He's got the first down and a whole bunch more. Look out. Ingracia spins down inside the 20-yard line or the 30-yard line. What a great play fake. 
And a huge run for Michael Ingracia. Yeah, that's one of those replays right there. And they went double A blitz their inside backers. And and Garcia just being a savvy senior right there pulled it. It wasn't his read. He just saw it was about to get blown up and pulled it and bounced it to the outside. And again, that's the scary thing about him. He can run and throw the football. So here it is again right now. I don't think this was his necessary nest read. He just saw the blitz coming and he got outside of Jaden Moore right there. And then that's a problem right there because he runs well and he's a physical runner. So he's tough to bring down. You see him break a tackle right there, stay in bounds and continue to go. First and 10, Marin Catholic. Wide open deep. Did he stay in bounds? It's McBride. No. It was close. Yeah, really close. That's what I imagine you're going to see it want to have back. He had at least two steps on him. If you miss down the field, you're walking in the end zone. And again, this two back set gives them what they want. They still got man coverage on the outsides, which it looks like they're able to win and they can run the ball a little bit better. But just mistimed that a little bit, got a little bit too wide in the sideline in the fade release, and then we missed outside with the throw, made it difficult. Couldn't quite keep the feet inbound. Second and 10 now. Under six minutes to play in the third. Lone back is Williams. And Gracia will throw again for McBride. Same play, and this time oh. it slips through his hands. Oh, my goodness. You won't see that happen very often. Yeah, that's one they'd love to have back if we're in Catholic. But, you know, credit to Marin Catholic right there. The, the, the corner went out of the ball game um, with a head injury, and they're attacking the backup corner. And he's a tough matchup. And you're, you're covering uh, McBride out there one-on-one -on -one by yourself. It's a really difficult matchup because he's its length, and he can run. So... You're in a tough spot if you back up and give him short stuff underneath. It's hard to tackle him. And if you press him, obviously you can get behind you and go out to compete you for the ball. Here's a big third and ten. It'd be interesting to see what Central Valley does. If they decide to actually start to cover him a little bit or then bring the pressure again. We need to get to about the 19-yard line, and they didn't get this snap off in time. Marin Catholic actually took a timeout just before the snap. That was going to be interesting. They're, Marin Catholic had a roll pass call to trying to get outside the blitz, and Central Valley was bringing the heat that time. So it would be interesting to see if they come at him again or they change the call up. This is where now the clock does come a factor. Now it's 5.45 left in the third quarter, and you're down by three scores. It's, uh, you know, definitely going to have to move fast offensively when they get the ball back. Bit of desperation. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, Unfortunately. Yeah. And really, they got here in a weird way, right? It's it just the field position in the first half affected them a little bit, but when they got that first score on the tip pass by that Zach Taylor and the RPO, that was a huge play. And then that last drive, which you forget, Marine Catholic hadn't moved the ball the entire half. They got the ball at the one-yard line, and the trust in their senior quarterback by Coach Moyette to continue to throw the ball and try to take some chances. They drive 99 yards down the field and make an unbelievable throw and catch to finish the drive off. Still third down, still 10 yards to go for Marin Catholic. Looking to win their first ever state championship here in the 4AA finale. Looks like Central Valley put Parker Jones in the cover McBride right now. Again, pressure again. They go the other way, and a penalty oh. marker down. Tuttle, the intended receiver, excuse me, Greco, the intended receiver. He couldn't hang on, but there is a penalty marker down. It'd be interesting to see that. That was a good call, call by Moyette. They were a 10 yard out to Greco, and he was open. He just missed the throw high. Looks like a hold. Or it's in the area where a hold would be called. You take that penalty, Dave, or you put it to fourth down? Yeah, I think you put it to fourth down. It looks like they're taking the penalty. Huh? Third and 20. Um, I guess you take them out of field goal range at that point when you take the penalty. But it's an interesting call because 
time is an issue right now. You want them yeah. running as little downs as possible. Third and 22. You wonder if they're going to roll him out again, try to get him outside the pressure, or maybe a screen pass. Still need to get to about the 19. They're at the 41. Blitz is coming. Swing it out to Williams. Makes the first guy and the second guy miss, Ooh. but he's finally knocked out of bounds, but it could be a late Ooh. hit. Unfortunate right there. They had to stop. I mean, Green Catholic flipped out a little screen, and they had the tackle on the sideline. He stepped out of bounds, and the, the hit was a little bit late on this one right here. So he's stopped right there. He's good, and then that's the, the second one right there. Yeah, that comes a little bit late. But it's hard when you're when you're playing. You know, it's a tough thing. I mean, it's it's almost unfair. You got Levi over there, and he's running his tail off to try to make a tackle, and the guy's avoiding hits, and then you kind of lose track of where the sideline's at. So. It was an effort play, and unfortunately, it just came a little bit too late. It's another angle of it. And yeah, Williams makes a, <laughs> makes a move in the first guy. He's elusive ball carrier. He's going to be a great player, but you could see the late hit right there. He yeah, definitely that's was the out one. Of bounds. Yeah, that's the one. And so it's a good call by the official and unfortunate. Another injured player down. Yeah, it's a dead ball, it looks like. So you're at fourth and one now, so. You still got him in fourth down, but one yard to go. So now you need a stop on this down. All right, we'll step aside. Hope the player is all right. CIF Sports. True dedication. Performances are improved by hard work and good preparation and not by performance-enhancing drugs. CIF Sports. True sportsmanship. Pursuing victory with honor is fundamental, and I should display class and character whether my team wins or loses. CIF Sports. True leadership. Being a leader is more than helping my team. It also means being a luminary at my school and in my community. There are numerous ways student athletes in California exhibit the importance of high school sports. The California Interscholastic Federation wants to salute all of its student athletes who strive to be successful on and off the court. The CIF, dedicated to developing student athletes of character. This message was made possible by the CIF and Max Preps. Injured player was Josh Noeski. He was able to lead the field under his own power. Well, goes back to that thing that could have Declined the penalty, went fourth and ten, and kept taking the penalty at third and 22, and worked against it because an unfortunate late hit out of bounds. But this is a huge play. You need to get a stop for Central Valley right now. There's the blitz. Oh, surprising Rick Cat throwing the ball. Complete to Matthew Greco, and he's got the first down. That's a gutsy call on fourth and one. Great execution. Really good. They swung the back and. He got covered, and they hit the crossing route, putting the cross by Greco. Good job. Again, trusting your quarterback in high school football is so important. And you got a three-year starter. First and ten, Marin Catholic. In Gracia flips it up over the defense. Charles Williams has it. He's got a first down, and he's got a touchdown. Williams finishes it off beautifully. Kind of the same combination they ran the fourth down, but this time Graziano just threw the ball over the defender that covered the back out. And obviously, a defensive end peeling off on Williams is very difficult. Looks like Marine Catholic's going to go for two, maybe here. Yeah, yeah bringing Williams back, back out because they missed the extra point earlier, so they'll try to get back on the number here. It does get you on the number. Timeout taken by Marin Catholic. So give us a chance to take a look at the touchdown. 
And you can see at the end of it right now, they just flip the ball over the defensive end, not try to pee off and cover, and, and Williams is an explosive guy. So I think they saw that the play before on fourth down. Graciano came off the swing pass where the end peeled off and hit the shot across. I think Mazzini liked the matchup and just said flip it over. There's a play on fourth down right there where they swing him. He comes off the swing because the end peels, and then the next play they go right back to the same play and they flip it over the defensive end. Here's the touchdown again. No, that's that fourth down play again. That's a sorry. Down play, yeah. I'm trying to show the touchdown again. I promise you I am. Here it is. I got it. Uh, you can see the defensive end, number nine, was peeling off Zach Ward, and they just got it over his head. At that point right now, you got a guy, you know, running in space for his man coverage, and Williams is an explosive guy, so he found that zone. They're still going for two after the timeout. And they won't get it. They do add to the lead, 26-0, Marin Catholic. They had the ball a long time. And that drive was aided by two penalties, uh, the, the late hit on the quarterback and then on the third down play, and then obviously the late hit on Williams out, out of bounds. And that really extended their drive. And those are important points. We'll be right back with more of the kickoff coming up next. Marin Catholic with a big lead. This isn't Madison Square Garden. These drills probably won't make anyone a number one draft pick. But these players are practicing for something important. While they work on their jump shots, they're also learning teamwork, discipline, self-confidence, how to deal with wins and losses. Skills that will make them winners long after they leave the court. Support high school activities in your community. Because when kids take part, they get set for life. See if Central Valley can get it going, put another guy back deep. It'll be Parker Jones that takes it once again at the 10. And he gets out to the 28 yard line. Well, you really got to have points on this possession right here if you have any chance of making the comeback. Yeah, the, the window's getting pretty tight right now. So you not only points, but you got to do it in a quick fashion, so that makes it difficult. But you know what? It's still four minutes or five minutes left to go in the third quarter, so you have a little time. It's just you need some chunk plays right now. Souza, nice little cut, and he gets to about the 36-yard line. Decent run. It's been successful all day. They run that little counter guard wing pull, and they're kicking the end out, and Souza's getting his uh, shoulder square, and it's been going for six, seven yards every time they've ran that play. Uh, Baker, looked like he was going to run. Now he does, and he might have picked up a couple yards. I don't think he's going to be near first down yardage, however. Yeah, that was it. They took a shot. I think that's, that's a good time to take a shot, too. It's second and three, and a little play action. They tried to get their slot or their wing guy down the field. Rick Catholic saw that, and, and number five, again, has done a really good job. Drew Ramos being over the top of Jaden Jaden Moore when he's inside as a slot guy or wing. Got over the top of their, their deep throw. Third and a couple here for the Cavaliers, trying to keep their hopes alive for their first ever state championship. Warren Catholic's defense has thwarted them all day long. Can they pick up the first down right here? Baker to throw, far side, complete. 
And it's going to be close. Clements makes the tackle on Zach Zwart. I think Zwart was able to get the first down on that second after reaching the cross. That was a tough first down. Three plays and Boy. 11 yards. <laughs> yeah, not easy, but they did give him the yardage. Uh -huh. This Marine, Marine Catholic defense is doing an unbelievable job. They do, they're containing more and Souza, and it's kind of a bend, bend but don't break. They're allowing you to get four or five yards to certain downs, but then as it gets closer to the chains later in the down, they really squeeze it. Pump fake, going go. deep. Got he's him. got a man, and uh, he's got it. Josh Noeski comes down with that one. Noeski made an unbelievable catch. They, they ran a little slip screen and go, and Noeski was able to get behind the corner. But the safety came all the way over the middle of the field and was able to, to fight for the ball. It was a really good throw, really good catch by Noeski. Those are the type of plays you need to get back in this ball game. You're on the 31-yard line now, and you got a chance to get some points on the board. Here it is again. See him fake the slip screen, the play they ran the before, and then Wesky slipped behind the corner and had a couple yards, but that was an unbelievable play. I mean, I'm really impressed with Drew Ramos. He's all over the field. Interesting set here. Yeah, no ball ended up. They had a short guy that was going to take it, and there's penalty markers down. Hmm. I didn't see the penalty. What was the penalty on that? Yeah, I'm not really sure. A goofy play, though, I'll tell you what. Really goofy. They go back to the double wing. Dominic Maxwell down inside the 30. Nice run. Trouble is, do you have time to now run this set? Yeah, no, yes. at this point, you may be just trying to put some points on the board, but yeah, you're right. This takes too much time. You're down by four scores, and you've got just a little over 12 minutes of football left to play. Yeah, staying in it. Play action. Dead. Hit as he throws. This pass is intercepted by Charlie Knapp. What a game for Knapp. He does it again. And Knapp is in the open field. And Knapp is going to go the distance. Touchdown, Marin Catholic, Charlie Knapp. Well, we'll see who got to the quarterback right there. That play was definitely made by the pass rush right there. Um, they were in double wing. Obviously, they knew the same thing we knew, that they had to score quickly. So they threw a play-action pass and tried to get more deep. And right when, when Baker was throwing the ball, he got hit right in the back. I'm curious to see who, who hit him in the back. Hawthorne to try to add the point. Little hesitation. He does get it up and he does get it through. Great play by Matthew Greco. The, the snap skip back to my Here's the replay right here. And it looks like number 40 from Marin Catholic. Charlie Seymour was the one that ended up hitting the back right when he was trying to get the ball down the field. And then obviously, as it you know, fluttered out of his hand, Charlie Knapp was able to intercept it and take it to the 75 yards to that house. And again, you look at Marine Catholic, all their players are working hard down the field after the interception, get a block, and, you know, really great game by Charlie Knapp. He's really been, you know, he showed on defense several times. Here's that pressure again on the quarterback that affected things. Yeah, hit right as he throws it. That's the difficult thing in play action. It looked like they did a pretty good job in coverage anyways, but when you run play action, the longer the play goes on, the worse off you are because you've got to sell the run and people start to realize it's play action and they start getting the pass rush. So it's really tough with the offensive lineman. And there's Knapp finishing it off. Marin Catholic in control. McKay Hawthorne to kick it away. 2.14 to go in the third. 
Parker Jones. They just do not allow big plays on special teams. You know, and they, they're so well coached. I mean, Mike Hoppe does a great job on their special teams. And every kickoff they've had today has looked the same on the return. They've allowed about 10 yards and tackled it right away. Well, now you're, you're finishing your senior year, or you're finishing out your season. That's been a great season, and, and you want to do it the right way. You want to, you know, drive the ball down and get a score here and feel good because you've had a great season. So Central Valley, we really love to see him drive the football here. Just haven't been able to get in rhythm and get anything going offensively all day long. They've had a couple decent drives, but had that one field goal attempt. That was about it. Parker Jones oh. does grab it on the second effort. Wow. <laughs> that was a great catch. Scary play because it looked like someone was driving down. I don't know who that was driving down for the interception. We'll see on the replay, but they throw a little stop, play to the slot guy. And it just bobbles out of his hands, and you see, oh, I, I can't see the number quite on that person. But I see the safety coming down really hard, and he almost had a chance for another interception. I think it was Zach Taylor who was right there. Could have had his second pick of the day. That pick he had in the first half was really crucial. Yeah, neither team was doing much offensively until that play as we get some penalty markers down. Both teams kind of moved, so we'll see who this goes against. Sometimes that happens. You get that first touchdown and people relax a little bit and, and get a little more comfortable playing in the game and then floodgates open. It seems like that did happen from Ray Catholic in the second quarter and obviously in the second half. Second and nine for the Cavaliers. Central Valley Christian from Visalia looking for their first points of the day, and they've got a minute left in the third. Here's Souza. And the play closes down quickly as Robert Tuttle gets there and knocks Souza out of bounds. I mean, Catholic did a really good job on that play. It was another counter play, which is something they've struggled with uh, today. And the defense then got underneath the kick block and made it bounce, and they rallied to the play. It was a really good job by Tuttle playing, tackling the guy on the bounce. Charlie Seymour has had a really good game as a defense lineman. Third down for Central Valley Christian. Under 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Max Baker to throw. Gets it off low, but it might have been caught. I think they are going to yeah. give him the catch. Wow. Nice grab by Zach Zwart. Zach Zwart's made a couple really good plays down the field. That was a really good job. Max you see Baker stay inside the pocket, get some pressure, steps up inside the pocket, and finds Zach Zort to the first down. Really good play by Baker. First and 10 from the 45 yard line of Marin Catholic. Quick pass out to Chapman Dunn. And he picks up a couple yards. That might have been a helmet to helmet on the sideline there. Charlie Knapp makes the hit. A hold. Huh. Okay. Didn't see that. They must have called him Jalen Moore. He was the guy blocking for that slip screen, but I, you, I couldn't see it from my viewpoint. The paint first down. As tough as a receiver blocking in that open space because you get your hands inside on the jersey and then as the defender reacts to where the ball is, which you don't know where it's at, you sometimes hold on the jersey a little bit too long. First and 15 now. Just a little less than that for the Cavaliers. Baker fires it complete to Moore. And quickly, the defense converges on him. They haven't been able to get him in open space too often today. Yeah, I think, I think 
you know, getting him on the outside of the number one receiver is a little bit easier to get him the ball. I put him in the slot in the wing, and right here you can see that. He gets man covered. The corner really stays off because it's such a spectacular weapon, and that might be something they could do in this fourth quarter. Put him on the edge a little bit, put him away from trips a little bit, and throw some stops and slants to him. And then when they come down and press him, or put pressure on him, try to take some shots deep. Three quarters of play in the books. We'll step aside and be back with the final 12 minutes of this one in just a moment. 1914, the California Interscholastic Federation has led the development of education-based interscholastic sports that help student-athletes succeed in their lives and pursue victory with honor. Representing more than 1,500 public and private schools statewide, the CIF sets direction for the future by building awareness and support, improving the participation experience, and establishing consistent standards and rules for competition and 735,000 student-athletes in California. The California Interscholastic Federation, committed to developing student-athletes of character. Start of the fourth quarter, 33-0. Marin Catholic looking for their first ever state title. Well on their way to doing that. Double pass. And it's incomplete. Nice idea. Marin Catholic seemed ready for it. Maybe something they've seen before on tape. Did a really good job defending it. If they try to take Zach Wartzwart from the wing on the other side and run him across in the sail pad and safety stayed with him the entire way. Good time to try it though. Third and four. Pass complete, look out, here comes the defense. And they swarm all over him. First man on the scene was J.R. Bosch. He's had a great game today for this Marin Catholic defense. The corners, the safeties, and the outside backers have just played unbelievable. They've done a great job tackling the run on the perimeter, all these slip screens and these bubble type actions. They've been so fast too. They've done a really good job. Um, they're able to get off blocks quickly and make those plays. Zach Swart was the receiver that time, and he had nowhere to go. Fourth down, they'll, of course, have to go for it. Down 33-0 in the fourth. So a stop to Jaden Moore. Jaden Moore is lined up wide to the far side. Yeah, going deep with Looking him. deep down the middle, and the uh, pass is a little bit high and incomplete. Decent coverage by Robert Tuttle. Chapman Dunn was the intended receiver. And Central Valley Christian turns it over on downs. Another good stop by Green Catholic defensively. They've allowed some yards and they've allowed some things to kind of grind away at them. But when it's important inside their own 40, when it's important in third and three, they, they tend to make those plays they need. Really good job defensively today. Now's a great time where you just you love to get some guys in the game and let everybody participate in the state championship. It's just a, a great experience for these kids. Here comes Williams, and Jaden Moore takes him down. We get a chance to see how good Jaden Moore is. You should see where he ends up. If I'm correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's a junior, I believe, right, Dave? Jaden Moore is indeed a junior. That is just scary <laughs> for the people that have to play Central I'm not Valley putting next them, year. I'm not putting them on the schedule <laughs> no, next year. Sorry. You can stay away from them. That Don't even a, call. Don't even call. Unbelievable football player. And he, you know what? He, he's such a good defensive man. It's, it's amazing watching him play. I just I imagine he's going to have a heck of a career. 6'4", 230, Cal, Fresno State, all interested. He might be SEC by the time he's done his senior year. You could be right about that. They really, the coaches have really used him well defensively too. It's it's interesting. He'll be a defensive end. They'll stem him down to the tackle position. They get matchups for him, but he he can't really run the ball to his side. A false start action there by Marin Catholic. 
Well, you, you're uh, pretty good friends with Mazi. You guys have competed against each other, scrimmaged against each other over the years. You've won a state championship in 2019. What do you think this means to him? Well, it, it, it's, a, I mean, it's a great thing to win a state championship. It's something that you work so hard for so many years, and, and he's been in these games like we had been in the game prior to uh, winning the state final, and it's just it's a great offseason. I just I think, you know, you, this time of year you're so tired as a coach, and you win a state title, and you get you know, a month or two before you start football again. It's just really a fun experience. And not only to Mazi Moyat, but the coaching staff that works so hard. These guys are, are such professionals at their job. So I am uh, I'm so happy for him because he's a great human being and he's done so much for, for young people the last 25 years. Here's Jaden Moore once again. He's still playing hard. Yeah, I don't. I just, I, I cringe for the people in his league next year that have to play him. I mean, that guy is... I, I talked to Mazi earlier in the week. and told me how special he was, but I'm amazed at how good he is. And Gracia in trouble, and he goes down, and it's Jaden Moore again, his third straight. Yeah, what a credit to Central Valley, too. I mean, you're down 33 nothing, and you're still playing super hard defensively. I mean, it, it's cool to see, because a lot of people get down like this, you hang your head. But you can tell how well they're coached and, and, and how prideful they are in their program. Parker Jones drops back deep. And Gracia will punt this one from about the 10-yard line. Low kick, chance for a return. Jones from the 50, and he's brought down immediately. J.R. Bosch. J.R. Bosch is someone that's stood out defensively as well on the special teams, but I think if you'd sum up one thing in this game that I've noticed more than, than anything else is how well Marin Catholic has played, played special teams. And they tackle. I mean, they don't uh, miss tackles. It's amazing. Every time they kick the ball, it's a four- or five-yard run, and they're swarming them. It's a, a credit to their program because that's something in high school, not a ton of time during the week to get this good on special teams. Is they're doing the things right. Well, here's a drive. He's pulling for Central Valley here. This is a good drive. See if the Cavaliers can at least put some points on the board. First and 10 from the 47 yard line. Jaden Moore lined up as a tight end this time. Pass complete to Maxwell, and he steps out at the 49 yard line. Dominic Maxwell's had a good game. He has. He, he, Maxwell has done a really good job. I and mean, he, He's a senior that kind of overachiever. He runs really hard in between the tackles, and he could do a lot of other things, catching the ball in the backfield, but really plays hard. Baker's another guy that you just you can tell he's a leader. He makes really good decisions, and he's coming back. For yeah, he's a junior. Next year. Yeah. yeah, they're going to be really good next year. Yeah, they got a lot of guys coming back. Baker rolls this time away from some pressure. And somehow that pass is complete. Wow. <laughs> that was impressive in traffic by Josh Noweski. Nice play, Noweski again. Scary throw. And then Charlie Knapp right there again for another opportunity and interception. They, these defenders from the Catholic really put a lot of pressure on the receivers. But scrambles out. Baker sees him. Puts in a spot where only his receiver can catch it. And, you know, again, press with Baker's performance today. I actually thought Knapp was going to pick that off for a second. Third and a couple now. Baker will step up. Could have probably run that one, wow. but he instead he throws it to Moore. And Moore has a first down. Baker's one of those guys, he just, he just has a knack for kind of finding guys in openings. openings. Right here, drops back and gets this replay right here. He drops back, bad snap. He's got to buy some time here, and you see the high pass where she steps up in there and just kind of slings it to Jaden Moore across the field. Drive continues, time. yeah. Good first time. From the 34-yard line now.
High throw complete. About the 27 yard line. That's Chapman Dunn who comes down with that one. I believe his first catch of the game, a little speed cut out away from the trip set. Good ball by Baker again. Nice little drive Central Valley's putting together. Pick up of seven on that one, so third and three. Yeah, I love the fact that Central Valley is still playing hard, man. They're, they are trying to put points on the board right here. Says a lot about their program and their coaches. Uh, Nobody home on that one. Pass was thrown to the outside. Receiver went to the inside. They had a little run play working wide away, and he, he went to it. He thought what was going to be a stop pattern because the corner is off, and receiver and him were not on the same page. Yeah, Mason Hughes has got to be excited about the players coming back next year. And they were in that state championship in 2018, lost to Pleasant Valley of Chico. The Catholic's been in it back in the day when you went down and played in the in the bowl down in Carson. That was that was a, you've been there a couple times too. That's a great opportunity. They don't do that anymore. Nah, those games are so fun when there's only, you know, three or four state championships a year. Oh great my, throw. what a catch. Wow. Touchdown. Chapman Dunn. Finally, Central Catholic gets on the board. That's an unbelievable throw and catch, man. Chapman, he catches the speed cut out. They go back to him on the fade cut. And Baker put the ball on the money in between two defenders. Great job, Central Valley. What a throw. What a catch. It, it was, I mean, he's looking left right there. He comes back. And watch this ball right here. He puts it in a spot between the safety and the corner. You almost couldn't put it in a better spot. And then the, the right foot was barely in bounds, just like an inch in bounds. What, that's a great way to end your great season. Well, we get to see their uh, swinging gate. I love the swinging gate. You just, <laughs> it's a creative thing. Oh, they snapped it. Good for them. And they don't get the two. You can't get points running it out in high school. So That's a, a rule you'd love to see change. You know, if someone goes for two or you block a PAT, you'd love to be able to get that extra point. Two the other way, yeah. It's yeah. Charlie Allen. Check out the touchdown again. I mean, again, the, uh, the great quarterbacks, and I think Baker's going to become a great quarterback his senior year, have amazing eye-hand coordination. For him to drop that ball in between two defenders and then the catch, I mean, I mean, obviously that catch by Chapman was unbelievable. Yeah, that was a small window. It's, you know, they, those guys have a knack. Like, they, you watch the NFL quarterbacks throw balls just in tight windows like that, and you see Baker has the ability to really thread the ball into windows. Good for, good for Central Valley. Look at the atmosphere. You look around here and go, this is pretty cool. You got Ring Catholics that brought in the extra set of bleachers. The, the, it's a packed house and just a fun day in December to watch the two great teams play a football game. Yeah, I love the end zone bleachers. They were building those yesterday as I was here setting up and uh, – it took a lot of effort, but I think it's great. You know what's cool about high school sports is that the community gets behind them. And it's really fun to see when you have a good season and all their friends from school and even the friends' parents from school get excited for those kids. It's really neat. Yeah, and the support here at Marin Catholic is unbelievable. 6.46 to go. A little surprised they didn't try an onside kick, you know, just, just to make things interesting, but they do <laughs> kick it deep and out of bounds. Yeah, I think right now and there's a point when the game's over, and obviously the game is over, and you just want to get everybody else in the game and not try to trick the other team and just do the right thing for both opponents on the field. Come on, Coach, stranger things have happened. You can come back, right? <laughs> yeah, I think in 33 to 6, six minutes left, that the strange things are done at this point. But, yeah, it's uh, – it is important to finish the game the right way. And There's Mozzie. Yeah, you love seeing the other uniforms come on the field. And, you know, just the guys get a chance to play in the state championship. It's something that 30 years from now they'll talk about. You know, we won a state championship in Ring Catholic, and I played, you know, six or seven snaps in the game. And, you know, it's a cool story. Had yeah, a nice chat with Mozzie yesterday as I was driving up the 101. He seemed pretty relaxed. Of course, he always seems pretty relaxed, right? He's just one of those guys that has that, that, that energy that's just not really too hyped up. He is one of those guys that has a mellowness to him that's really cool. And he's number 24, 
get a carry and bounce it to the outside. McKay Hawthorne. McKay Hawthorne. What a great name, McKay Hawthorne. Is that also their kicker, Dave? Is McKay Hawthorne? Yeah, kicker? yeah, he does uh, the kicking, and uh, <laughs> he's pretty good, I'll tell you what. And he's a junior as yep, well. Yeah, he's a junior. I think both these teams will be pretty good next year. Yeah, Marine Catholic's got a pretty, pretty young team as well. They do. There's what they're playing for. Yeah, those yeah, are fun to play for. And it's Hawthorne again. Double flags this time. You notice how Marin Catholic is being extremely smart and running to the left away from Jaden uh, Moore. That's a, I think they've seen enough of him all day. Second and 15, just under six minutes to go now. Talked about it in the open, how this really wasn't the Marin Catholic team. I think anybody figured was going to pull something like this off. A credit to the, to the kids, to the coaches, and the entire community here for making this happen. No, it's, it's, uh, that's, why, that's one thing you... you Sometimes the teams that win the state championship do surprise you. It's just uh, you kind of get the right chemistry. You avoid the big injuries. Um, you get the right matchups, and, and it works out for you. But, yeah, it's a, I mean, again, coming into the year, talking to Mozzie a lot in off season, they, and he, he knew they were young and they had a lot of work to do. But the thing he really liked was the quarterback coming back, which who doesn't when they have a great quarterback coming back? It gives you a chance to win any game, any, any game you play in. They waved off that flag. Nice play defensively by Levi DeYoung. I'd like to see a stop in Central Valley get another score. It'd be a great way to finish their season. Approaching the five-minute mark. We go under five minutes now. Little delay, and Hawthorne gets to the 31-yard line. Blake Gambini looked like he snuck in there um, underneath the guard trying to block him. Made a really nice tackle on Hawthorne. So the Cavaliers' defense does come up with a stop. Their run defense all day has been really, really good. Number seven, Parker Jones back to receive the punt for the Cavaliers. Parker Jones back deep. Coming after the punt. Jaden Moore almost got there, too. Great Parker punt. Jones makes the first guy miss. Look at this, a little space. Little wall set up to the left. Good job. And they get to the 49, one of their best returns of the day for sure. But... There is a penalty marker down right back near the catch. <laughs> what do you got, Coach? <laughs> uh, this is when your coach is saying, put your penalty flags down right for both sides. Mm -hmm. You've got four minutes left. And there's a little block in the back. It's not dangerous. Let it go. But nice return. A good attempt at the block right there. And, and obviously, you know, still playing super hard. And this is a drive you'd love to see work out for Central Valley. Amazing you think back in you know, 1975, 1976, they just started the North Coast Section Championships and it was a two game playoff. And you know, now you're looking at a state final and teams coming from down south to play teams up north and vice versa. It's Seven cool. divisions? Seven divisions. With two 
yeah. divisions in each division. That, by my math, that's like 14 plus the open 15 it's, games. It's interesting, yeah. And our first, I remember the first state championship, which we had an opportunity to play in 2006. There's only three divisions. So it's really expanded, and the, the section of the state's done a good job getting kids to play extra games. Passes incomplete, intended for Zach Zwart, who's had a good game offensively. Couldn't quite get to that pass. Tried to make a one-handed grab, but couldn't do it. One of the few passes Baker's thrown where he had time, where he was a little bit off the mark. He's been really good today. I mean, super active with the ball. This is one of those great feelings you're on the sideline and the coaches and players know from the Catholic that it's won a state title and it's just, you know, all the work that's went into it, all the off-season stuff after the COVID year last year. What a great thing for them. Second and 10 for the Cavaliers, under four minutes to play. Jump ball. Jaden Moore wins the jump ball. Good play. You know, they, that's something they threw earlier in the game, and Charlie uh, was able to make an interception where the ball's a little bit overthrown, but he's still it short and a little bit to the outside to Jaden Moore. He's got a chance to go just be a basketball player and go get it. Good play design, good execution. First and ten, more again. Why not get the ball to your favorite guy, right? I think handing the ball or throwing the ball to your best guy is a good idea. Here's sports. the earlier play, that jump ball yeah, catch. Just, it's, just, it's a little short because the coverage was just over the top, and you give a guy that's 6'4 that can out jump anybody on the field a chance to go get the ball. and That's tough to defend defensively for Marine Catholic. Then they come back and throw a stop the next play to him. Good Over job. the middle, that's going to be first down yardage for Josh Noeski. Swung Sousa out of the backfield, got the linebacker to kind of float with him and sat down Noeski right in the zone, and Baker found him again. Baker's really an impressive quarterback. He's, he's, he's tough, and he really has great eye-hand coordination. He's kind of a gunslinger. A little under three to play. Pass complete. Wow. That's Chapman Dunn, who had the touchdown reception earlier, and he gets to the 35-yard line. One of the few times they've thrown a bubble or slip screen out to their guys, and they've been able to make some mess and get some yards out of it. That was a really good job by Chapman Dunn. Another good drive. Clock ticking. Second and three, maybe four. Pass complete, Jaden Moore, and he steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, I think this is a spot to have him in versus the defense from Marine Catholic's played all day. Just put him on the outside. They can't really double him. They can help late over the top, but not early. So I think it's really good they're taking advantage of this. You know, it says a lot about teams when you watch, you know, them in a game like this where they're down by so much and they continue to compete. It just really speaks volumes of what they're being told week in and week out by their coaching staff and, and, and the people in their school. That one's incomplete. Two minutes to go. I think they tried to get the back down the seam there. And Catholic did a good job picking him up, and Baker had nowhere to go. And he did a really smart thing, got the ball down the field far enough where he didn't get an intentional grounding because he was going to get a pretty negative sack there. There's Jaden Moore coming out wide to the near side. Imagine he'll be involved in this play right here. Second and 10 from the 29-yard line. Baker fires it to the inside to Dunn, and he gets a couple. Marine Catholic defense is just always in the right place. There's always a guy there, right there. And if he makes that first tackle, which they usually do, they are tough. They're tough to beat. They're tough to surprise. 
They are well coached defensively, and their defensive backs, their outside backers have done a great job in this game, tackling people in open fields and, and getting on people really quick after the catch. Baker looking into the end zone, mm. incomplete. Noeski was out there, had a shot at it, pretty good throw, but turned just a bit late. Good pattern, a slant angle combination, they had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and again, Drew Ramos, who's had a great game all day, was able to match him up and be there to compete for the ball or compete for the, you know, the PSD DB on the receiver. Fourth and three. Central Valley takes the timeout. You know, as a competitor, you just want to get this thing in. And I know Central Valley, Coach Hughes really wants to score one more time just to kind of finish the season the right way. So. I always wanted to watch a game from up there. I think the nuns a lot of times from the Yeah, the deck league. up there. Yeah, yeah. This, they call that the student center. Oh, yeah. man. I think that's where I'm going to, when I retire, I'm going to go there and watch all the games. There you go. Maybe there's a little wine up there. People just kind of watching the ball game, sitting there in a nice, comfortable environment. It's like a fun spot. And you can see, yeah, that's a cool place. One thirty-one to go. Central Valley Christian trying to put some more points on the board before it's time uh, to get on the bus. And Marine Catholic jumped. Actually, it was number six from Central Valley. Just got a little bit nervous. Chapman done. The guy walked up and pressed late on. Oh no, you're right. You're yeah, they called Catholic. it the other way. Okay. Was that on the defensive lineman that I didn't see? Or I think so. Yeah. Okay. So I thought it was. Good. Dunn kind of started his foot fire last second right before the snap, huh? Oh, got the first down. Got away with it. Yeah. Officials have some hearts, too, maybe. Right at the 17-yard line. Nice throw, Jaden Moore dragging defenders, and Moore has a first down, but the ball pops out. They're going to call him down. And if they didn't, I think they would have scored a touchdown. The guy, the guy recovered the ball. I can't see the number right now, but he jumped on the ball. Is that Nowinski, number four? Yeah, yeah, they jumped on the ball in the end zone. Good play. Again, they ran a swing by the back, and they did a spot pattern underneath the back of the fall on the back. And it took four guys to bring him down. Yeah, next year we'll take 12 guys to bring him down. First and goal. Souza. Touchdown, Souza. Great job. Josh Souza straight ahead. Gets in the end zone for Central Catholic. Or, excuse me, Central Valley Christian. I think Central Catholic is playing in a state championship, too, aren't they? They lost Modesto? last night, so they ended up uh, playing a really good game. I forget the team they lost to, but they lost 31-22 to last night. Here is the swinging gate again. Yeah, this is interesting. Okay, Susan oh. takes it. And, wow, okay, that's hard to snap at that. That's like a 45-degree angle. They got to work on that a lot. I think they should make every team want to run the swinging gate. I think that should be a mandatory thing. No more PATs in the game, swinging gate only. I love that. <laughs> Here's the touchdown. I feel good for Souza. It's a counterplay again, and it had a lot of success with that. And, uh, you know, Souza is obviously a great back. It's nice to see him score a touchdown to end this game right here. There it is again. We'll see the blocking right here. Yeah, they've been able to kick the defensive end. And that's a really good kick right there because the Marine Catholic guy rides down pretty well and they get the kick on him. And once you get the guy square in a counter play, it's really tough for that inside backer to make a play. They've done a good good job with that play all, in all their sets, in their, in their double wing set, in their open set, in their wing set. They've done a really good job running counter against Marine Catholic. Okay, so now do you go for the onside kick? No, I think you end the game the way it should be ended. If the game's <laughs> over, you kick it deep, you let them down it three times, and it's okay to end that way. 
but they do have a different kicker in, so I could be wrong, which I've been wrong quite a few times today. Number 54 is the first time he's kicked today. Looks like Marine Catholic does have the hands team in just in case. It is an onside uh, kick, and it's not going to go 10 yards. Got to go 10 yards before the offensive team can recover or touch a defensive yeah. player. Those things are so difficult. I, I, yeah, look at that. You love to see that. I mean, look at the joy on the sideline. Just people so excited. And it's not, it's not only the coaches. just people that taught at the school before, administrated the school before. Everybody just feels great for these guys. The first state championship on a football field from Marine Catholic uh, that they, they've won. You know, you're so happy for this program and the coaching staff and the community. It's been a joy to watch this game. Yeah, it's been a long time coming for this program. And uh... Well, that's the thing, right, is you, you, you get there and you keep grinding away. It, it takes a while to, you know, get comfortable playing in these games. And, and then people younger watching people play in these games get more comfortable. And this is the culmination of a lot of teams playing super hard over a lot of years and it's just fun to see. And I imagine every one of these players and coaches is just happy that they got to do this on the field for their community. Oh, look out, Mozzie. They're coming for you. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a tradition that should be removed from the sideline. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be able to sneak that up on Mozzie. He's got, Mozzie's he's, pretty, yeah. <laughs> he's got a lot of guys watching out for him. He's checking the look. He's looking. Yeah, good for Mozzie, though. He think they'll get him before the night's over. There's the final snap. Great game of football. They're going to try. You got to... Decoy him with a hug, right? So yeah, right. Hug him. Right. And then you got to complete the job. Maybe, maybe add in Harold to Ben as a distraction. There you go. Ah, uh, they've kind of given up on it. Oh, and here comes uh, the students. Are they excited or what? Yeah, that's, a, that's cool. We'd love to see the handshake with Central Valley happen here, too, because those guys did a great job. And, Seems like one cat's heading that way, which is really cool. But nothing better than seeing your student section rush the field. And won a state championship, played a great game, and had a great season. So congratulations to Marine Catholic. And the bucket is still alive, Dave. If you look. Yeah, the bucket's still in play. <laughs> yeah, so we, we'll see how that ends up. Mozzie, I did not see him. He might have gotten off the field. I don't know. He's out there somewhere. I'm kind of rooting for the guys with the bucket. And there's the handshake. Yeah, that's what you love to see. That's again, that's something that I think in sports is so important. You guys play super hard. And, you know, you watch your opponent all week, and just to be able to congratulate the team that won and the team that lost on how hard they played. I mean, there's some guys out there that really left them on the field today, and it was a really fun game to watch. Really, the score, you know, got away from Central Valley a little bit in the third quarter, which happens in big games like this because you're pressing to try to get back in the game. But it was a very competitive game. Yeah, no doubt. All right, we'll take a break right here. Be back with the Community First Credit Union post-game show. We'll have the awards ceremony coming up in just a moment. It's a final. Marin Catholic wins the state title. And we'll be back with the awards presentation in just a moment. You matter. And it matters what you do. Your actions affect those around you and your community. It matters who you buy from, where you bank, your footprint on the environment. Since 1959, there has been a local financial cooperative that is distinctively different from a bank 
Its charter requires it to do good. Good for its members, their kids, and the communities where they live. That cooperative is Community First Credit Union. Anyone in the counties of Sonoma, Napa, Mendocino, Marin, or Lake can join. By banking with a credit union instead of a bank, not only do you get better rates, lower and fewer fees, but your locally earned dollars stay local. With Community First, you help people, businesses, and the schools where you live. Community First is also a leader in tech conveniences. The first with contactless debit cards, perfect in this pandemic era. We were the first locally based bank or credit union with an app to make deposits via your smartphone. And the first with 24-7 virtual banker powered by artificial intelligence. I want a bank where I get more. I want a bank where my community gets more. I want a bank where 80% of management are women. I want a bank where I can get the most free ATMs nationally. Do you want a bank that teaches us money? About money. Bank, where it matters to you, personally, ethically, locally. Community first started by local teachers in 1959, is here for good. There's your final score, 33-14. The teams are taking this opportunity to pray together at midfield as we get ready for the awards presentation. That's one thing that's really cool. You got a, a Catholic school and a Christian school playing one another. They take that moment there to pray and, and you know, they're thinking about the right thing after the game. <laughs> Determined to get Mozzie, Trenton, Francis, Kurraid. I'm kind of rooting for the water bucket people, so we'll see if they can pull it off. But Mozzie's pretty slick, so I don't know. He probably has got some people watching his back right now. <laughs> yeah. They got him? No. What do you think, Dave? I don't know. Is that Close. even, a, even get him there? Somebody got it a little bit, but I'm not sure if it was Mozzie that took the worst of that. Yeah, I think Moss kind of won that battle. He's right kind of there. one guy you don't want to hang out with when this when this no. time comes. No, that's a. <laughs> they they gave some effort though, right? They, they, they really did. They, they had a tremendous effort. A lot of times that bucket was put down and picked back up, and you know, <laughs> good for them. I'm sure players enjoy that after a long season sometimes. Being with a coach for that many weeks and starting off in January and finishing up late December, early mid-December, and you get a chance to dunk some water on his head. It's like they're just about set up for the awards. The score kind of got away from Central Valley, but this was really a pretty close game, pretty hard five. It was 7-0 at halftime, right? It was 14-0, yeah. Yeah, but really the I mean the, the biggest play I think of the game was well, the interception was huge, but that drive where they went 99 yards. And they had the ball at the one yard line. And they had, I guess, the confidence in their offense to continue to take shots down the field and they drove the ball and they hit that play in the corner. Um, with about 19 seconds left in the half, and it made it 14 0 opposed to 7 0. California, 4 AA state champions. The first state championship in Marin County. The Marin County Wildcats. Hoisting the championship trophy. 
it's something these guys on this team will look back. They'll come through the halls and they're, you know, out of school 10, 20 years and they'll see that trophy on display. And it, it, the trophy will just be a representation of the memories they had of their friends on this team and how hard they worked and how much they accomplished. So congratulations to everybody that was involved with that state championship. All right, well, that is going to do it for our coverage today. Hope you have enjoyed it. Congratulations to both teams. Central Valley Christian had a heck of a season. Finished 9-5. and five. Marin Catholic finishes this thing off with a tremendous state championship, 14-1 and one on the year. And they will put on the hats. Get some t-shirts, maybe get some rings made. I don't know what, but uh, they did it. State champions, Marin Catholic High School. There is your final score, 33 to 14. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage today. I'm Dave Cox for Paul Cronin, our director today, Michael Baribalt, and all of us here at YSN365.com on the NFHS Network. We will see you again next football season. we got a lot of basketball coming at you here in the next couple months. Until then... Wish you well. Happy holidays. Congratulations, Marin Catholic, 2021 state champion.